kota ini cukup besar dan padat. Memiliki sungai terpanjang dan menggunakan simbol satwa endemik besut. Ialah kota Samarinda. Merupakan pusat pemerintahan ibu kota Kalimantan Timur. Dari masa ke masa, kota ini terus menunjukkan peningkatan. Tak hanya di sektor perekonomian, namun juga di sektor pendidikan. Institut Agama Islam Negeri Samarinda merupakan pendidikan tinggi pertama yang mengedepankan pengetahuan agama Islam. Merupakan buah tangan dari beberapa tokoh yang tergabung dalam organisasi Islam. Demi meningkatkan mutu pendidikan, IAIN Samarinda terus melakukan serangkaian kerjasama di bidang pendidikan baik bertaraf nasional maupun internasional melalui program kerjasama yang dijalin dengan berbagai lembaga terkait. Sejak berdiri sampai sekarang Institut Agama Islam Negeri IAIN Samarinda telah mengalami sembilan kali periode kepemimpinan. Tokoh-tokoh inilah yang membawa IAIN Samarinda tumbuh dan berkembang dan terus mengalami kemajuan dan peningkatan dari waktu ke waktu. Infrastruktur pendidikan didukung beberapa gedung bertingkat, dilengkapi dengan fasilitas penunjang, berupa gedung perpustakaan, laboratorium, dan masjid untuk praktik ilmu agama Islam dengan menerapkan konsep lingkungan hijau. Tidak hanya pada tumbuh kembang fasilitas, namun juga pengembangan pada fakultas dan jurusan seperti Fakultas Tarbiyah dan Ilmu Keguruan Fakultas Syariah Fakultas Ekonomi dan Bisnis Islam Fakultas Uspuluddin Adab dan Dakwah Program Pasca Sarjana atau Magister Untuk menjamin kualitas pendidikan, di tiap fakultas IAIN Samarinda memiliki lembaga penjamin mutu atau LPM yang menjadi pusat quality assurance dalam menciptakan budaya mutu tridharma perguruan tinggi demi mewujudkan visi IAIN Samarinda. Sebagai perguruan tinggi keagamaan Islam negeri di Kalimantan Timur, IAIN Samarinda selalu mengedepankan pendalaman ilmu agama Islam namun tidak mengesampingkan ilmu pengetahuan. Penguasaan bahasa Arab dan bahasa Inggris dengan bimbingan dosen yang berpengalaman di taraf nasional maupun internasional agar mereka nantinya mampu meraih prestasi yang membanggakan. 
Untuk itu, IAIN Samarinda memandang perlu adanya sebuah lembaga yang mampu melaksanakan program unggulan. Maka dibentuklah Ma'had Al-Jami'ah atau Pesantren Kampus. Dengan diikuti seluruh mahasiswa baru IAIN Samarinda dalam kurun waktu satu tahun. Terlepas dari itu, puluhan unit kegiatan mahasiswa hadir untuk mengembangkan minat, bakat, serta potensi mahasiswa. This event will be our last big event because we with the next generation. Sebagai cikal bakal ibu kota negara yang baru, IAIN akan berevolusi menjadi Universitas Islam Negeri dengan meningkatkan fasilitas diki, tenaga pengajar, hingga terus mencetak prestasi. IAIN Samarinda bersama pemerintah Provinsi Kalimantan Timur terus bekerja sama dalam peningkatan mutu pendidikan melalui berbagai cara, salah satunya pemberian beasiswa, serta tidak kalah pentingnya, lulusan perguruan tinggi mampu mengisi formasi-formasi pekerjaan, baik di pemerintahan ataupun swasta. Kebijakan politik suatu negara mempengaruhi kondisi dan situasi pendidikan yang ada di sekitar. Dengan berubahnya kebijakan, Republik Indonesia ibu kotanya akan berpindah ke Kalimantan atau Borneo. Menuntut kita semua, termasuk ia yang sama untuk berbuat yang terbaik sesuai dengan tuntutan peradaban bangsa. Selamat bergabung dengan Yayan Samarinda. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Di dunia, kita tak mengenal keabadian. Yang tersisa hanyalah ilmu yang tewariskan. Mengejar ilmu pendidikan, seraya ilmu keniscayaan. Karena kita tidak akan tahu usia yang akan dititipkan. Hakikatnya, ilmu tak akan pernah pergi dan ia akan terus berkembang. Ilmu agama dan pengetahuan saling mengisi. Ia membentengi di setiap sanubari. Pengetahuan hendaknya dibagi. Hanya berharap Ridho Sang Ilahi. Kita bicarakan tak hanya hari ini, namun bicara nanti yang kekal dan abadi. Kota ini cukup besar dan padat, memiliki sungai terpanjang dan menggunakan simbol satwa endemik besut. Ialah Kota Samarinda, merupakan pusat pemerintahan ibu kota Kalimantan Timur. Dari masa ke masa, kota ini terus menunjukkan peningkatan tak hanya di sektor perekonomian, namun juga di sektor pendidikan. Institut Agama Islam Negeri Samarinda 
merupakan pendidikan tinggi pertama yang mengedepankan pengetahuan agama Islam. Merupakan buah tangan dari beberapa tokoh yang tergabung dalam organisasi Islam. Demi meningkatkan mutu pendidikan, IAIN Samarinda terus melakukan serangkaian kerjasama di bidang pendidikan, baik bertaraf nasional maupun internasional, melalui program kerjasama yang dijalin dengan berbagai lembaga terkait. Sejak berdiri, sampai sekarang Institut Agama Islam Negeri IAIN Samarinda telah mengalami sembilan kali periode kepemimpinan. Tokoh-tokoh inilah yang membawa IAIN Samarinda tumbuh dan berkembang dan terus mengalami kemajuan dan peningkatan dari waktu ke waktu. Infrastruktur pendidikan didukung beberapa gedung bertingkat, dilengkapi dengan fasilitas penunjang, berupa gedung perpustakaan, laboratorium, dan masjid untuk praktik ilmu agama Islam dengan menerapkan konsep lingkungan hijau. Tidak hanya pada tumbuh kembang fasilitas, namun juga pengembangan pada fakultas dan jurusan seperti Fakultas Tarbiyah dan Ilmu Keguruan Fakultas Syariah Fakultas Ekonomi dan Bisnis Islam Fakultas Ushuluddin Adab dan Dakwah Program Pasca Sarjana atau Magister Untuk menjamin kualitas pendidikan di tiap fakultas IAIN Samarinda memiliki lembaga penjamin mutu atau LPM yang menjadi pusat quality assurance dalam menciptakan budaya mutu tridharma perguruan tinggi demi mewujudkan visi IAIN Samarinda. Sebagai perguruan tinggi keagamaan Islam negeri di Kalimantan Timur, IAIN Samarinda selalu mengedepankan pendalaman ilmu agama Islam namun tidak mengesampingkan ilmu pengetahuan. Penguasaan bahasa Arab dan bahasa Inggris dengan bimbingan dosen yang berpengalaman di taraf nasional maupun internasional agar mereka nantinya mampu meraih prestasi yang membanggakan. Untuk itu, IAIN Samarinda memandang perlu adanya sebuah lembaga yang mampu melaksanakan program unggulan. Maka dibentuklah Ma'had Al-Jami'ah atau Pesantren Kampus. Dengan diikuti seluruh mahasiswa baru IAIN Samarinda dalam kurun waktu satu tahun. Terlepas dari itu, puluhan unit kegiatan mahasiswa hadir untuk mengembangkan minat, bakat, serta potensi mahasiswa.
this event will be our last big event because we will the next generation Sebagai cikal bakal ibu kota negara yang baru, IAIN akan berevolusi menjadi Universitas Islam Negeri dengan meningkatkan fasilitas yang dimiliki, tenaga pengajar, hingga terus mencetak prestasi. IAIN Samarinda bersama pemerintah Provinsi Kalimantan Timur terus bekerja sama dalam peningkatan mutu pendidikan melalui berbagai cara, salah satunya pemberian beasiswa, serta tidak kalah pentingnya, lulusan perguruan tinggi mampu mengisi formasi-formasi pekerjaan, baik di pemerintahan ataupun swasta. Kebijakan politik suatu negara mempengaruhi kondisi dan situasi pendidikan yang ada di sekitar. Dengan berubahnya kebijakan, Republik Indonesia ibu kotanya akan berpindah ke Kalimantan atau Borneo. Menuntut kita semua, termasuk ia yang sama rendah, untuk berbuat yang terbaik sesuai dengan tuntutan peradaban bangsa. Selamat bergabung dengan ia. Di dunia, kita tak mengenal keabadian. Yang tersisa hanyalah ilmu yang tewariskan. Mengejar ilmu pendidikan, seraya ilmu keniscayaan. Karena kita tidak akan tahu usia yang akan dititipkan. Hakikatnya, ilmu tak akan pernah pergi dan ia akan terus berkembang. Agama dan pengetahuan saling mengisi. Ia membentengi di setiap sanubari. Pengetahuan hendaknya dibagi. Hanya berharap ridho sang ilahi. Kita bicarakan tak hanya hari ini. Namun bicara nanti yang kekal dan abadi. Kota ini cukup besar dan padat, memiliki sungai terpanjang dan menggunakan simbol satwa endemik besut. Ialah Kota Samarinda, merupakan pusat pemerintahan ibu kota Kalimantan Timur. Dari masa ke masa, kota ini terus menunjukkan peningkatan Tak hanya di sektor perekonomian, namun juga di sektor pendidikan. Institut Agama Islam Negeri Samarinda merupakan pendidikan tinggi pertama yang mengedepankan pengetahuan agama Islam. Merupakan buah tangan dari beberapa tokoh yang tergabung dalam organisasi Islam. 
Demi meningkatkan mutu pendidikan, IAIN Samarinda terus melakukan serangkaian kerjasama di bidang pendidikan, baik bertaraf nasional maupun internasional. Melalui program kerjasama yang dijalin dengan berbagai lembaga terkait. Sejak berdiri, sampai sekarang Institut Agama Islam Negeri IAIN Samarinda telah mengalami sembilan kali periode kepemimpinan. Tokoh-tokoh inilah yang membawa IAIN Samarinda tumbuh dan berkembang dan terus mengalami kemajuan dan peningkatan dari waktu ke waktu. Infrastruktur pendidikan didukung beberapa gedung bertingkat, dilengkapi dengan fasilitas penunjang, berupa gedung perpustakaan, laboratorium, dan masjid untuk praktik ilmu agama Islam dengan menerapkan konsep lingkungan hijau. Tidak hanya pada tumbuh kembang fasilitas, namun juga pengembangan pada fakultas dan jurusan seperti Fakultas Tarbiyah dan Ilmu Keguruan Fakultas Syariah Fakultas Ekonomi dan Bisnis Islam Fakultas Usbuluddin Adab dan Dakwah Program Pasca Sarjana atau Magister Untuk menjamin kualitas pendidikan di tiap fakultas IAIN Samarinda memiliki lembaga penjamin mutu atau LPM yang menjadi pusat quality assurance dalam menciptakan budaya mutu tridharma perguruan tinggi demi mewujudkan visi IAIN Samarinda. Sebagai perguruan tinggi keagamaan Islam negeri di Kalimantan Timur, IAIN Samarinda selalu mengedepankan pendalaman ilmu agama Islam namun tidak mengesampingkan ilmu pengetahuan. Penguasaan bahasa Arab dan bahasa Inggris dengan bimbingan dosen yang berpengalaman di taraf nasional maupun internasional agar mereka nantinya mampu meraih prestasi yang membanggakan. Untuk itu, IAIN Samarinda memandang perlu adanya sebuah lembaga yang mampu melaksanakan program unggulan. Maka dibentuklah Ma'had Al-Jami'ah atau Pesantren Kampus. Dengan diikuti seluruh mahasiswa baru IAIN Samarinda dalam kurun waktu satu tahun. Terlepas dari itu, puluhan unit kegiatan mahasiswa hadir untuk mengembangkan minat, bakat, serta potensi mahasiswa. This event will be our last big event because we the next generation. 
Sebagai cikal bakal ibu kota negara yang baru, IAIN akan berevolusi menjadi Universitas Islam Negeri dengan meningkatkan fasilitas yang dimiliki, tenaga pengajar, hingga terus mencetak prestasi. IAIN Samarinda bersama pemerintah Provinsi Kalimantan Timur terus bekerja sama dalam peningkatan mutu pendidikan melalui berbagai cara, salah satunya pemberian beasiswa, serta tidak kalah pentingnya, lulusan perguruan tinggi mampu mengisi formasi-formasi pekerjaan, baik di pemerintahan ataupun swasta. Kebijakan politik suatu negara mempengaruhi kondisi dan situasi pendidikan yang ada di sekitar. Dengan berubahnya kebijakan, Republik Indonesia ibu kotanya akan berpindah ke Kalimantan atau Borneo. Menuntut kita semua, termasuk ia yang sama dengan untuk berbuat yang terbaik sesuai dengan tuntutan peradaban bangsa. Selamat bergabung dengan ia yang sama dengan. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Di dunia, kita tak mengenal keabadian. Yang tersisa hanyalah ilmu yang tewariskan. Mengejar ilmu pendidikan, seraya ilmu keniscayaan. Karena kita tidak akan tahu usia yang akan dititipkan. Hakikatnya, ilmu tak akan pernah pergi dan ia akan terus berkembang. Samarinda merupakan pendidikan tinggi pertama yang mengedepankan pengetahuan agama Islam. Merupakan buah tangan dari beberapa tokoh yang tergabung dalam organisasi Islam. Demi meningkatkan mutu pendidikan, IAIN Samarinda terus melakukan serangkaian kerjasama di bidang pendidikan baik bertaraf nasional, maupun internasional melalui program kerjasama yang dijalin dengan berbagai lembaga terkait sejak berdiri sampai sekarang Institut Agama Islam Negeri IAIN Samarinda telah mengalami sembilan kali periode kepemimpinan tokoh-tokoh inilah yang membawa IAIN Samarinda tumbuh dan berkembang dan terus mengalami kemajuan dan peningkatan dari waktu ke waktu. Infrastruktur pendidikan didukung beberapa gedung bertingkat, dilengkapi dengan fasilitas penunjang, berupa gedung perpustakaan, laboratorium, dan masjid untuk praktik ilmu agama Islam dengan menerapkan konsep lingkungan hijau.
والقلم وما يسطرون ما أنت بنعمة ربك Tidak hanya pada tumbuh kembang fasilitas, namun juga pengembangan pada fakultas dan jurusan seperti Fakultas Tarbia dan Ilmu Keguruan Fakultas Syariah Fakultas Ekonomi dan Bisnis Islam Fakultas Uskuluddin, Adab dan Dakwah Program Pasca Sarjana atau Magister Untuk menjamin kualitas pendidikan, di tiap fakultas IAIN Samarinda memiliki lembaga penjamin mutu atau LPM yang menjadi pusat quality assurance dalam menciptakan budaya mutu tridharma perguruan tinggi demi mewujudkan visi IAIN Samarinda. Sebagai perguruan tinggi keagamaan Islam negeri di Kalimantan Timur, IAIN Samarinda selalu mengedepankan pendalaman ilmu agama Islam namun tidak mengesampingkan ilmu pengetahuan. Penguasaan bahasa Arab dan bahasa Inggris dengan bimbingan dosen yang berpengalaman di taraf nasional maupun internasional agar mereka nantinya mampu meraih prestasi yang membanggakan. Untuk itu, IAIN Samarinda memandang perlu adanya sebuah lembaga yang mampu melaksanakan program unggulan. Maka tentuklah Ma'hab Al-Jami'ah atau Pesantren Kampus. Dengan diikuti seluruh mahasiswa baru IAIN Samarinda dalam kurun waktu satu tahun. Terlepas dari itu, puluhan unit kegiatan mahasiswa hadir untuk mengembangkan minat, bakat, serta potensi mahasiswa. This event will be our last big event because we will... The next generation. Sebagai cikal bakal ibu kota negara yang baru, IAIN akan berevolusi menjadi Universitas Islam Negeri dengan meningkatkan fasilitas yang dimiliki, tenaga pengajar hingga terus mencetak prestasi. IAIN Samarinda bersama pemerintah Provinsi Kalimantan Timur terus bekerja sama dalam peningkatan mutu pendidikan melalui berbagai cara. Salah satunya pemberian beasiswa serta tidak kalah pentingnya lulusan perguruan tinggi mampu mengisi formasi-formasi pekerja baik di pemerintahan maupun swasta. Kebijakan politik suatu negara mempengaruhi kondisi dan situasi pendidikan yang ada di Indonesia. Dengan berubahnya kebijakan Republik Indonesia ibu kotanya akan berpindah ke Kalimantan atau Borneo. 
menuntut kita semua, termasuk ia yang sama juga, untuk berbuat yang terbaik sesuai dengan tuntutan peradaban bangsa. Selamat bergabung dengan ia yang sama juga. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Auzubillahiminasyaitonirrojim Bismillahirrohmanirrohim Excellency Rector of State Islamic Institute of Samarinda Honorable all the speakers Respectable Head of Department Directors Managers Coordinators Lecturers Staff College And employees of State Islamic Institute of Samarinda Dearly all beloved online participants and the steering committees of this event. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alamin Wassalatu wassalamu ala asrafil anbiya iwal mursalin Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in Rabbi sohri sodri Wa yassirli amri Wahlul uqdatam min lisani yafkahu kawli Assalamu alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh Good afternoon from Indonesia Good morning, good afternoon, good evening Depending on where in the world you are And thank you very much for joining with us Ladies and gentlemen Very warm welcome to all of you On the Educational Virtual International Conference With the theme Innovations of Learning in Higher Education in the New Normal COVID-19, which is organized greatly by State Islamic Institute of Samarinda, East Kalimantan Province, Indonesia. This virtual aims to support teachers, lecturers, academic education, red school, basing tips and resources. You find us this even live in June and uh, at our YouTube channels at TV EIEN Samarinda. Firstly, praise and thanks always be with for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mercy attends all over the universe who has created the words belong to all mankind. And he also has given a lot of us mercy and blessing to the can so that we can attend this prestigious conference without any obstacles.
Secondly, salawat and salam always be with our profitation and all human best example who has brought us from the darkness to the lightness, from the stupidity to the cleverness, namely Islam. Distinguished speakers, I'm Dina Destari Imanudin, and I'm delighted to be a master ceremony at this international prestigious conference. Let's start this special event by saying Basmalah. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Ladies and gentlemen, let me deliver the structure of the conference today as follow. First, opening. Following that is Dilawah Al-Quran, the third speech from the committee of speech from committee chairman. The fourth is welcome speech from rector of State Islamic Institute of Samarinda, and the last one is closing. Now let's start our event by inviting Brother Abdul Sani for Tilawah Al-Quran. Yeah. <laughs> 
Thank you, Brother Abdul Sani, for giving such delightful start of our occasions. We are moving for invocations. Please welcome Al Mukarom Ustad Muhammad Hassan for the recital of dua. Ustad Hassan, time is yours. Al Fatiha. Alhamdulillah <laughs> Alhamdulillah <laughs> Tafurukana min ba'dihi tafurukana min ma'asuma Allahumma rizukna hubbaka Wa hubba nabiyika Muhammadin sallallahu alaihi wa sallam Rizukna kulla amalin yukaribuna ila hubbik Wa hubi nabi Muhammadin sallallahu alaihi wa sallam Allahumma inna nas'aluka al-huda Wa al-tuqa wa al-afafa wa al-gina Rabbana hablana min al-salihin Rabbana zalamna ampusana wa illam taghfir lana wa tarhamna lana kunana min al-khasirin Rabbana atina fi dunia hasana wa fi al-akhirati hasana wa kina azaban aru Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alamin
Thank you very much, Ustad Muhammad Hassan. Ladies and gentlemen, turning to the next agenda, please welcome to the committee chairman, Dr. Muhammad Salehuddin. Dr. Muhammad Salehuddin, time is yours. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahirabbil alamin. Assalatu wassalamu ala asrafil anbiya wal mursalin sayyidina wa maulana Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in amma ba'd. Excellencies, Rector of Islamic Institute of Samarinda, speaker online participant, the committee head of the department staff, colleagues, ladies and gentlemen. Firstly, praise to the Allah, happy for his blessing so that we can attend this event. Secondly, salawat and salam, Allah should be with my Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, peace be upon him. Good afternoon from Indonesia, and thank you for joining us at the Visual International Event, Innovation of Learning in Higher Education in the New Normal COVID-19. Ladies and gentlemen, there are 20 speakers from 10 different countries and participants, uh, our eminent speaker and participants, who have come from all over the world uh, with you, a very warm welcome to our prestigious international event. We are in the honor to have, have you here with us. We have about uh, 1,442 uh, participants from 36 countries gathered here today, making our conference a three international one. Uh, as a chairman, uh, I would like to inform that the main goal of this conference is extremely support higher education in this pandemic, particularly learning innovation, not only for the lecturers sub as a sub administration, but also university uh, students. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I hope that this uh, three-day conference uh, a platform uh, for top leader, academic, and researchers to share their e ideas and view on common research integrity issues. Uh, will collect, will challenge uh, all participants, in particular the heat of institution, lecture, lecturer, and student to think more about the innovation challenge, challenges and responses in learning integrity, uh, we may in turn inspire new and particular uh, standard in the educational field. In addition, in addition to that, so. So, uh, standard will be especially important uh, for educator and educational institution growing rapidly, not only as major innovation teaching and learning universities, but also research universities. It will save, uh, save land again, we, uh, our behavior can be assessed and be a point of uh, references to deal with innovation of learning in higher uh, education. I uh, correct uh, participants to particip participate uh, actively in the interesting discussion of uh, the next three days. Uh, I wish uh, everyone uh, successful and uh, fruitful conference. Uh, thank you. Uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi
Thank you, Thank you very much, very much for, for Dr. Dr. Muhammad Salehuddin. Ladies, Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen it's an, an honor, honor to have, have Rector of State Islamic Institute of, of Samarinda to, to deliver his welcome speech as well as officially open the Spiritual International Conference. Please welcome Professor Dr. Muhammad Ilyasin. Mr. Rectors, time is yours. قد أعطانا نعما كثيرة حتى نستطيع أن نجتمع في هذا المكان المبارك إن شاء الله صلاة وسلاما على سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم الذي قد أخرج الناس من الظلمات إلى النور The Honorable Speakers from Indonesia, Qatar, India, Egypt Algeria, Bangladesh, Philippines, Kuwait, and Dubai. First of all, praise to Allah, the Almighty, for all His blessing. Where today we could all gather here in order to attend the virtual international conference by the tema of innovation of learning in higher education in the new normal COVID-19. Dear speakers and participants, it is a great pleasure for me to open the virtual international conference and to welcome the participants and speakers from all over the world who are here to exchange experience and work together for a few days on the exciting field of education. As the Rector of State Islamic Institute of Samarinda, it's my privilege and pleasure on behalf of the committee and the institute to welcome you here today in this conference. We are very delighted to have you here with us to participate and share in our virtual international conference. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to express my sincere appreciation to all of you who can actually help us make this even come together to become a success. Thank you to each and every one of you for being here with us today. We are very pleased to be able to welcome those of you that have been with us for a long time as well as those who are new. With all due respect, we gladly say selamat datang and selamat bergabung di acara kami. Welcome and thank you for joining our event. Ladies and gentlemen, you have all been chosen to be a part of this conference due to a mutual passion for the same purpose which is to be able to create learning innovation in order to adapt to the crisis we all face, the crisis of COVID-19 both pandemic. Your passion all to unite and the energy we create is what allows us to achieve our goal. We need you in order to be able to face the challenge and come up with greater solution of this serious problem. That's why we are so grateful to have you join us here. 
We are very honored to have many of amazing keynote speakers who are esteemed specialists in the field of education and also the great committee who have been working so hard for this event to be realized. Nothing much I can say, but thank you. Thanks for the hard work and support. Before I hand over this speech, I want to say it one more time on behalf of the host organizing committee. Welcome. It's wonderful to see all of you here. With all great speakers we hear, ladies and gentlemen, let's open this event by reciting Basmalah together. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Thanks for your attention. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you very much, Mr. Rector. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for all of those who have joined us at this session. Your cooperation and participation are highly appreciated. I hope you enjoyed the event for about three days forward from today to Friday, September the 18th, 2020. I encourage participants to participate actively in the interesting discussions over the next three days. I wish everyone happy, successful, and fruitful country. Ladies and gentlemen, Welcome to day first of this international conference. This is parallel speakers with two sessions. The first one start from 2 to 3 p.m. and the second one from 4 to 5 p.m. Central Indonesia time. On behalf of the steering committee, please smash the link at our YouTube channel in the description box down below. Make sure you subscribe and like. Help us grow and thank you so much for your kindness. Ladies and gentlemen, let's get the first parallel speaker from Indonesia, Philippines, and Pakistan. Kota ini cukup besar dan padat, memiliki sungai terpanjang, dan menggunakan simbol satwa endemik besut. Ialah kota Samarinda, merupakan pusat pemerintahan ibu kota Kalimantan Timur. Dari masa ke masa, kota ini terus menunjukkan peningkatan tak hanya di sektor perekonomian, namun juga di sektor pendidikan. Institut Agama Islam Negeri Samarinda merupakan pendidikan tinggi pertama yang mengedepankan pengetahuan agama Islam. Merupakan buah tangan dari beberapa tokoh yang tergabung dalam organisasi Islam. Demi meningkatkan mutu pendidikan, IAIN Samarinda terus melakukan serangkaian kerjasama di bidang pendidikan, baik bertaraf nasional maupun internasional, melalui program kerjasama yang dijalin dengan berbagai lembaga terkait. Sejak berdiri, sampai sekarang Institut Agama Islam Negeri IAIN Samarinda telah mengalami sembilan kali periode kepemimpinan. Tokoh-tokoh inilah yang membawa IAIN Samarinda tumbuh dan berkembang dan terus mengalami kemajuan dan peningkatan dari waktu ke waktu. Infrastruktur pendidikan didukung beberapa gedung bertingkat dilengkapi dengan fasilitas penunjang 
berupa gedung perpustakaan, laboratorium, dan masjid untuk praktik ilmu agama Islam dengan menerapkan konsep lingkungan hijau. Tidak hanya pada tumbuh kembang fasilitas, namun juga pengembangan pada fakultas dan jurusan seperti Fakultas Tarbiyah dan Ilmu Keguruan Fakultas Syariah Fakultas Ekonomi dan Bisnis Islam Fakultas Uskuluddin Adab dan Dakwah Program Pasca Sarjana atau Magister Untuk menjamin kualitas pendidikan di tiap fakultas IAIN Samarinda eh, sebentar, sebentar, memiliki lembaga sebentar. penjamin mutu atau LPM yang menjadi pusat quality assurance dalam menciptakan budaya mutu tridharma perguruan tinggi demi mewujudkan visi IAIN Samarinda. Sebagai perguruan tinggi keagamaan Islam negeri di Kalimantan Timur, IAIN Samarinda selalu mengedepankan pendalaman ilmu agama Islam namun tidak mengesampingkan ilmu pengetahuan, penguasaan bahasa Arab dan bahasa Inggris dengan bimbingan dosen yang berpengalaman di taraf nasional maupun internasional agar mereka nantinya mampu meraih prestasi yang membanggakan. Untuk itu, IAIN Samarinda memandang perlu adanya sebuah lembaga yang mampu melaksanakan program unggulan. Maka dibentuklah Ma'had Al-Jami'ah atau Pesantren Kampus. Dengan diikuti seluruh mahasiswa baru IAIN Samarinda dalam kurun waktu satu tahun. Terlepas dari itu, puluhan unit kegiatan mahasiswa hadir untuk mengembangkan minat, bakat, serta potensi mahasiswa. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. All my beloved participants, before the moderator start, I am as the co-moderator, would like to announce you some important information related to this conference. First, the certificate will be available for those who join at least 30 minutes in all sessions from day one to three of our virtual international conference. Second, the e-certificate link for your participation can be obtained by filling the feedback form available only at the end of Friday sessions, September 18, 2020, from Zoom and YouTube, and automatically will be closed after two hours. Your cooperation and participation is very highly appreciated. Thank you. Stay healthy and keep positive. And I offer to our moderator, Mrs. Maisha Rahmi, PhD.
di klik bawahnya kiri bawah Virtual International Conference, Innovation of Learning in Higher Education in the New Normal COVID-19. State Islamic Institute of Samarinda, Indonesia. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My honorable speakers and participants, good afternoon from Indonesia. Good morning and good evening to all of you from all the world. I would like to say thank you very much for joining this international conference. I'm my in this first session. We have three speakers in this session. The first speaker is Dr. Umar Fauzan, Master of Education from State Islamic Institute of Samarinda, Indonesia. The second speaker is Chris Tizita, Master of Art, Education, Senior Member of Apaston, MNHS, Department of Education, Batangas Province, Philippines. <coughs> And the third speaker is Professor Roy Anderson, Principal of Kingston College, Lahore, Pakistan. Distinguished speakers and audiences, welcome to this virtual international conference under the term Innovation of Learning in Higher Education and the New Normal COVID-19, held by State Islamic Institute of Samarinda, Indonesia. It is a great pleasure for me to tell you that the conference today is attended more than thousand participants from many countries over the world. They are Tunisia, China, Algeria, India, Philippines, Morocco, Palestine, Egypt, Yemen, Iraq, Bahrain, Mexico, Bangladesh, Oman, Romania, Israel, Kuwait, Qatar, Sri Lanka, Montenegro, Iran, Macedonia, Zambia. Nepal, Malaysia, Bahrain, France, Jordania, Libya, Peru, Saudi Arabia, Sudan, Turkey, United Arab Emirates, and of course, Indonesia. Thank you for joining us. This virtual international conference will live on Zoom and also our YouTube channel on TV, IAI, and Samarinda. So for those who cannot join Zoom meeting, you also can watch Unlike YouTube, TV, IAI, and Samarinda. The conference today will divide it into two sessions. The first is presentation from the speaker, and the second is discussion from the participation. We have 90 minutes for this session, 20 minutes for presentation, and 10 minutes for each question and answer session. So after each speaker presentation, please write your question and the chat box along with your name and your country base. Well, without further delay, I would like to invite our first speaker, Dr. Umar Fauzan, Master of Education from State Islamic Institute of Samarinda, Indonesia. Before I turn it to him, I will give you a little bit description about him. His name is Dr. Umar Fauzan. He is lecturer in State Islamic Institute of Samarinda, Indonesia. He has many publications in field of education, and this presentation he will present entitled Research-Based Learning in the New Normal COVID-19. I will check him. Mm -hmm. Hello, Dr. Umar. Hello, Dr. Umar, are you there? 
Dr. Mulai Saro. I'm here. I'm okay. here. Okay, how are you, Doctor? I'm fine. Uh, thank you. Yeah, what about okay. you? Okay, that's good. Yeah, I'm doing well, Alhamdulillah. Okay, that's great. And I over it to you, Dr. Fauzan. The time is yours. Okay, it's my time. Well, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Yes. The respectful speakers, my fellow speakers from Philippines and also from Pakistan today for the first season, and also other speakers and all participants. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Alhamdulillahirrahmanirrahim <coughs> Salatu wassalamu ala sallallahu alaihi wa sallam wa sallam Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahabihi wa jemaah Muhammad um, Moderator, can you share my material? How to share? Uh, um, yeah, okay, I think the co-host will uh, share yeah. the yeah, the slide, please. Okay, this uh... <laughs> I think I cannot right. share my my material using. Okay. Yeah. Uh, can you load your your sound, Doctor Umar? Yeah. Uh, we will wait for the co-host for yeah sharing the slide for this presentation. Yes. I think okay. this yeah already there. Yeah. You can start, sir. Please. Um. Please make it um, my my slide. Okay, that yes. Well, ladies and gentlemen, education. Today, I'm going to talk about uh, innovation on learning. About um, research-based uh, learning. Before talk before talking about research-based learning, let's talk about education in general first. Education is a uh, human right. Means that every human in this planet has has a right to have a good education. That is why the UNESCO, the organizations of the uh, United Nations, propose that education must be implemented at least using. by four pillars of education, learning to know, learning to do, learning to be, and learning to live together. Means that our students, people, people in Indonesia all around the world, they have to have education not only about getting to know, not only about getting certain knowledge, but also doing something, but also reaching his, her, their dreams to be something in the future. Related to this concept of the four pillars of education, our Indonesian education system proposed by Mr. Nadim Makari proposed what's so called by independent uh, learning. Independ independent learning has has a philosophy of culture of learning and also culture of innovations. Mean that learning must be done anywhere, any place, any time, any sources. If a people, person, our students, our family, innocent people could in, could use any sources around him, around them, around her, and make it better, make him, make them, make her get a certain knowledge. That's so-called by learning. And independent learning could be done by using three ways. 
according to Ministry of Education, Indonesian Ministry of Education and Culture. The first is reading a lot. Reading. Many kind of reading that we have to read. Our students, people could read books, reference book, journal, magazine, newspaper, online newspaper, any kind of, of, of reading to improve the knowledge, to gain what happened around us, what happened in, 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 in a nation, in, in the world. The first is reading a lot. Second, trying a lot. When you know something, when you get something new as your knowledge, please try it, implement it, using it. If you open YouTube and you know how to make, how to cook something new, how to make a sauce, for example, that knowledge, use it, try it, and try it a lot. And that is working a lot, innovate a lot. If you, if you fail in trying, you cannot give up, just try and try again. So by the concept of independent of learning, all people, innocent people, people around us can have education, can do learning process, not only in the boxes of classroom, but also outside the classroom. This is that that is why the Ministry of Education call it as independent uh, learning. But of course, learning is depend not not depend only on the nation or UNESCO. But learning is depend on ourselves, depend on the student itself, depend on personal how he she could could navigate his life, his way of learning into certain directions. Not only not only learning without any purpose. She or he must have any purpose of his or her learning. What she or he wants yeah. to be in the future. She wants to be something or she doesn't want to be something. Of course she not she cannot be passive in the future. She must be really active, based on learning, based on something uh, new, she or he get, he can be something in the future. So, learning is the goal of how to achieve the learning is depend on the personal, institution, and also national guideline or national policy. Well, we know nowadays that we, ha we are facing deadly virus uh, condition, COVID-19, really stressful, make many people lose their jobs. This COVID, this coronavirus really hits people's life in many sectors of life, create many jobless, people losing their, their, their work, their job, because they cannot uh, go to office and economic so so problem, many problems about the economy. And also about education. This, this COVID-19 also gave very deep bad impact in the sectors of education. Thousand schools, thousand universities, colleges are closed. But education should go on, right? Cannot stop education because of the pandemic. There must be certain way to to implement education and one of the ways by implementing research based learning particularly for education in higher education next slide please the operator next 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 slide please anyone here okay research based learning research based learning just go on to the next slide this is this learning is is this kind of uh, learning which include the research into uh, learning. Many people use use to spare between research and learning. They, they think that research is research and then learning is learning. They live in different world. But in the concept of research, but learning here is quite different. This this learning is trying to include the research into the teaching and learning process. So learning will be done by doing a research. Next slide, please. Research-based learning try to 
Next slide, please. Net research-based learning try to try to uh, combine, try to focus not only to the content, not only to the knowledge, not only to the theories the student have got in the classroom, but also try to implement, try, try to see the implementation, the effect, how these theories work in the real life. This is the goal of um, this is this learning. How to balance theories and practice, knowledge and real life situations. Go on to the next slide, please. Research, yes, very nice. So, knowledge here, the students have got many knowledge. Theories in, in, in the classroom, but not all students understand how to implement the theories. Not all students understand whether these theories work or not. Sometimes the student learn how to how to okay, for example, in, in the classroom of teaching and learning process, teaching management, let's say, classroom management subject. The students are taught how to handle students, how to manage students by theory of a theory of B theory of C, but sometimes they never know whether the theory are successful or not when they are implementing into the real situation in, into the real classroom. This is the way of research-based learning works: how to use certain theories in, in certain of situation. Okay, next uh, slide, please. How? how to implement the research-based learning. This is the, 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 the very tricky, important question for many people. Starting with the research questions, asking students, asking our students, guiding them, teaching them how to find problems, how to, how to, how to formulate research questions, there is there is an inner risk that without research question, this is the first step of doing a research. This is the first step of learning by implementing a research. Research question. Research question is or are the question that can be answered only by conducting a research. And how to teach the student propose finding, formulating problem. There are at least three ways, three per perspective on, on teaching the student how to develop their idea in, in finding, in reaching the research question. The first is their curiosity, his or her or their curiosity. Everybody has their own curiosity about something about anything. Second is based on his or her or their problem or or his or her surrounding surrounding environment problem. And the next is innovations. Okay, next slide please. Curiosity. Okay. I believe that too fast the slide. I believe that um, that many people will address question of how the very teenage young girls could influence millions of people around the world. If we have if we have students from English language department, early childhood education, mathematics student or major, technology, informatics students, in all, in all major, we are teaching the student. Just find a little bit about the thing what happened around us. So there are many young girls in the world who could inspire many people. And based on the curiosity, we can ask our students to, to formulate any question. How could they do? How could happen? How 
support Malala and Greta struggle, how Greta Malala, the idea of for Greta for fighting the climate change and for Malala struggle about education shot by Taliban, survive and try to struggle, try to inspire many people around the world in terms of education. This is only one example of curiosity. Many phenomena around us and, and use those phenomena to attract the student curiosity about something. Social media, the phenomena of social media, many, many of our students, many of our students use social media 24 7. They use, they open, open, open Facebook, Instagram, and many. And the big thing here is, do they use social media to learn or to teach or to get something related to teaching or learning process, or just for having fun? This is the curiosity that, that, that we can try to, to instill of the students. And also, Many, many out of um, out of book, I, I can say that. For example, the phenomenon of uh, polygamy. For example, one one man uh, has more than one one wives. In the perspective of economy, we can ask the student to observe what happened from the financial problem for family if one has one husband has more than uh, one life uh, about the economy. What about teaching, making a family? What about teaching the children? What about the Islamic perspective? What about from Islamic law perspective? Many perspective, many phenomena that can be observed from many perspectives. And, and it depends on, on, on us as a teacher or lecturer to teach the student, to direct the student, to lead the student, how to find the, their curiosity and make it into into uh, research questions. Next slide, please. Next slide. Okay. Teacher, lecturer, now facing students who are focus focusing on um re, what is it um social media all the time and we we have to try to connect into the students' real life that that what happened to our students might be different to us in the past when we when we were young and and when our students are in their age now it might be different now our students like to play like to open like to share many things related to cell phone internet uh, social media laptop they sing using uh, TikTok, for example. They write, they make, they make poem using app. They make story using uh, app. They share their, their experience using uh, app. They do anything related to their life. They, they, they do the assignment using the app. So many things happen online many many things happen and if you want to play if you want to if you want to ask the student is instruct the student formulate the research question we might use this a uh, ways we might ask this the student don't you want to to know your your friends your family using those uh, app related to teaching and learning. Don't, don't forget, the, the perspective is using those all apps is for teaching and learning. Many activities happen. We have to connect to teaching and learning. Okay, next slide, please. Problem. How to formulate problem can be also based on the problem that might have by our student or their friend, family, teachers, colleges, anyone, problems. Then we have many problems. The students have many problems around them. That is why use, 
use the use this problem as the basic information, as the rationale of our research, as as the first step to to find a, to find a research questions. The problem might be about the slide, please. The pro okay. The problem might now almost every day we face a uh, hoax in our cell phone. Um, and in in many media, there, there, there are many hooks. In the perspective of teaching and learning, hooks can be observed by, let's say, using discourse analysis, for example. Every day we all we always uh, watch on TV. There are many fighting done by. This, these problems, our social problem can can be also observed in the perspective of using research, especially for Islamic education, for example. How the Islamic theories answer this problem? How the concepts of moral, how the concepts of value can be observed to see this phenomenon, this moral phenomenon that happen on the street? The phenomenon of poverty, for example, many poverty around us. How the students from economic faculty, we are as a teacher or lecturer, could lead the student to find the problem, to formulate research question based on the poverty they have or the people have around us. Game uh, online. I'm sorry, Dr. Umar. Yes. You still only have one minute to, to complete your presentation. One minute? Yeah, I'm so I sorry. I have one minute left, okay. Yeah. Okay, um, because I have no more time to to explain many things about, about uh, this research, uh, the concept of research, this problem. Let me explain in really, in really short um, explanation. Implementing research-based learning, we are as a teacher. We are as, as a teacher or lecturer could, could uh, show the student how to conduct a research based on their, uh, their own major. The major from economic, from education, whatever the major, but try to find, try to find a, a phenomenon or try to find problem, try to find the good thing around them as, as, as a topic to our student uh, research. And after find the problem, then then we need the student to collect the data. Of course, collect, collecting the data based on certain theories. After collecting the data, we get the student to analyze the data. Analyze the data can be done by using statistic analysis or descriptive um, descriptive analysis. After analyzing the data, then we teach the student how to make a discussion and conclusion. Discussion means what are the findings they found from the research, and then what are the differences be between his or her finding compared to others, and also implication. What next after the find? And after doing a research, after making conclusion, the last step is presentation. We have to teach this, our student in doing in reporting by presentation by pre, by making presentation using oral or written ways. If written ways, we have to, we can ask the student to write their uh, research in terms of academic writing. In academic writing, we can teach the student how to make citation, how to collect paragraph, how to, how to use plagiarism uh, tools or plagiarism checkers, how to apply reference manager, and how to, how to submit their writing into a reputable uh, journal. And the last, not only in uh, writing, but also in in terms of uh, presenting in oral way. And we can like, we can help the student, we can get the student by making presentation in terms of, for example, uh, students conference, students seminar, and they can practice them how to report their research um, using student um, seminar, using student conference. And by doing this research based 
based um, learning, even this COVID pandemic, we cannot avoid this COVID company, we can meet uh, our school in the classroom, in the conventional face-to-face face-to-face uh, classroom, but we can use um, we can use online ways, we can lose, we can use online learning, we can use Zoom, you can we can use WhatsApp uh, app to give any instructions, to give any guidance to the student <coughs> how to okay. from the first half to the last statement I until the time is over. Thank you. I think that's all my presentation. Now back to my yeah. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Okay. warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you very much, Dr. Umar from Syed Islamic Institute of Samarinda, Indonesia. Uh, that was the great presentation from him. So please give him virtual applause. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, now, before we uh, go to the next session for question and answer session, uh, I would like to remind to all the participants, uh, please uh, fill the attendance form uh, that shared uh, on the chat box. So, uh, for the all participants who want to uh, ask the question to Dr. Umar uh, about research-based learning in this uh, new normal COVID-19, please give uh, and write down your question on the chat box on Zoom. Okay, I will be wait for your uh, participants on this discussion. Just write down your question on the chat box. We can check here. Okay. Yeah, thank you very, very much on the chat. It's uh, very, very excited with this presentation. Uh, all of you come from different countries from over the world. Thank you very much for joining. And I hope all of you will enjoy uh, this international conference. Okay, uh, before the question come, I would like to... Second. question. Okay. Okay. So uh, we will pending for the question and answer session. Sir, uh, he come from uh, Pakistan. Yeah. This is our invited speaker. Come from Lahore, Pakistan. He is a principal of Kingston College, Lahore, Pakistan. Uh, he will deliver about the the reason why school needs to change. Uh, in the face of artificial intelligence. <clears throat> Please welcome Professor Roy Anderson. I will check. Are you there? Hello? Professor Anderson? Okay, yeah. Are you ready, Prof? Please unmute the... It's not allowing me to do that. Okay, fine. Yeah. Thank you. Allow me uh, allow me. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Hello? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Clear, clear. Yes. Okay, wonderful. Yeah. Allow me light yeah. on my... How okay. How Welcome. are you, Prof? I'm very fine, thank you. Yeah, thank you very much for joining our international conference today. And... I will give you 20 minutes for presentation and uh, we will uh, we will continue uh, 10 minutes for question and answer. Okay. okay. Please have your very time, well. Professor. Yes. I'll do that. Thank you very much. Okay, we'll try this. Salam alaikum, everybody. My name is Roy Anderson. I am originally from England. At the moment, I'm working in Pakistan. The subject I want to talk to you about is very, very important. Dr. Fuzan made a very important introduction about the toxicity, how toxic the world of our children is. I want to go a little bit further and explain to you the probable reality that our children will live and work in. Now, we know about artificial intelligence. Let me just give you a glimpse of what the world of our children may be like, and therefore why we need to understand the importance of restructuring how we educate. If I may please screen, share the screen, Matt. Can you share the screen, please? Can I... Share screen, please, yes. The co-host will, yeah, will share your slide. 
will wait for the for the slide. Yes, that is it. The slide. Oh, sorry, brother. I'm I'm in a conference. Can you give me half an hour? Okay. Uh, this is. Oh, this is not what I'm looking for. I need to get a different screen. Let me change the screen. Just one moment, please. Um, uh, no, I, I don't. I'm sorry. I'm trying to find out how to change the screen. Um, oh, you want to to share your screen? The house, the, the co-host and host will, yeah. Yeah, please share my screen. Okay, please wait, Professor. Yeah, he will share uh, by herself, himself. Yes, please. Okay, okay. okay. <laughs> Mau share sendiri, mau share sendiri, yeah. No, it says the host has, has disabled uh, it says the host is preventing me from screen sharing. Uh, okay, Professor, um, you can share screen from your own Zoom. Uh, the co-host will allow you to share your screen. Yeah, but it's not allowing me, ma'am. It, it says the host has disabled attendee screen sharing. You have to allow me to, sh to share my screen. Okay, uh, the co-host, please allow. Professor Anderson wants to share. Please wait. Okay. Okay, they, they already allowed you, you to share your screen. Yeah, can you please start? Yeah, yes. Okay, just let me see who we are. Okay, my friend, you can see this uh, big, where are we going? Just, just one second. Okay, what I'm going to explain to you now is very important for all parents and for all anybody interested in children. I'm going to suggest to you um, that the way we educate children today is based on a 19th century political design that we are not aware of, and that we are moving children in a method that will not allow them to have the level of responsibility in the ways they behave or in how they think for the world they will live and work in. Now this is 20 minutes, it's a very short time, so I'll try to go as quick as I can, but as clearly as I can. The importance we need to understand is what is the purpose of the job? Now, we might say a job gives me money, I can buy a car, I can buy food, I can buy furniture. No, no, the importance of it gives you a sense of responsibility. You know who you are, you have a self-identification. You respect yourself, you. therefore you respect your society. Now, every country carries five, eight percent unemployed people. These people have no respect for themselves and no respect for their society. But they are so spread out, we don't, we don't understand the effect. What we need to consider is if artificial intelligence takes many jobs, then many people will have no jobs, many people will have no self-respect, respect their society. How then do we maintain stability? This is very important to understand. But just very quickly, uh, uh, please let me talk as quickly as I can here. For the past 6,000 years, we've been creating jobs by taking the raw resources from the ground, fashioning them, we, we collect them, we use processing systems, and we create jobs. So something like this, so that we take iron ore from the ground, then we heat it, we make steel. We take oil from the ground, and we use heat to change it into plastics and chemicals. And what we are doing is we are taking the mass, molecule, mass molecules. We're not dealing them atom by atom, but just molecules by molecules, heating, cooling, heating, cooling. 
And by doing this system, we create jobs for people. In every society, we create jobs. And now we have distribution, sales, and administration. And so in every society of the world, depending upon its technological background, people obtain their jobs. We have, the, we have the people who collected, the doctors, everybody has a job by taking the molecular structure of the ground and changing it by heat. So we make everything in our world. Now we hear about the fourth industrial revolution. This is wrong. There was only one industrial revolution. This was 1750 to 1950. Then we had the technological and then the computer era. And now we're in the nano era. And very few people understand the implications behind this. We hear of nanotechnology, nanophones, nanofibers. This is not what the implications are. But we may understand within the next 30 years, 50% of jobs will be taken over by artificial intelligence. People say, well, we'll create new jobs. If you understand what nanotechnology is, you cannot create new jobs because there won't be any jobs. Nanotechnology is based on the idea of very, very small machines. You cannot see them, they're too small. Now there are two kinds of these machines. One is an assembler and the other is a dissembler. The dissembler can drill into any substance, rock, soil, clay, and oil, with a computer program, analyze the molecular structure, dissemble this into individual atoms. An assembly then goes in, and according to its computer program, it connects these atoms together to create a new compound. So one machine creates another machine, creates another machine. These are self-replicating. The idea then is these machines then link together to create whatever the computer program is. It creates a computer. It creates a chair. It creates a desk. It creates a wall. It creates a house. It creates a carpet in the future, and it's moving faster than we know, we are moving into a world where we don't need human beings. Machines will create the environment by themselves. Now, 50 years ago, and that's a long time, 50 years ago, NASA said, if we send one of these machines to the moon, one machine can create a whole space complex with no human beings involved in it. Now, this is a very, very short talk here. But if we then move on to this, what we are considering is that sometime in the future, we'll have a society that doesn't need very many people. The society will need a few people to maintain human issues, healthcare, psychology, nursing, these kinds of things. But the other jobs that now give people a job, a human and a purpose, won't be needed. The, the teachers, the lecturers, the engineers, the mechanics, the service people, they, their jobs will be taken over by machines. Now the problem then is that every landmass will then be divided into two kinds of societies. A small society of people required by the system, those people will be given incentives and opportunities. They will enjoy going to work, they will be rewarded, their children will have a good education. But the other people who no longer have a job will live in a decaying world. Crime, alcoholism, drug abuse, all these will go up. Now, I've proven that intelligence is not genetically inherited. It's environmental, completely, once you understand what environmental means. Now, the problem we're moving into is that now there is one country in the world where the people on the left do not want to mix with the people on the right. They are insecure by them. So they make a compound. So the people trapped in this com this is a huge city, and there's cities within this. These people are not free. They cannot move around the country. They need a passport, a visa to get out, and it's complicated to do that. So for this generation, their children and their grandchildren, their great-great-grandchildren, they are trapped in this compound. Now, it's also beginning to happen in South America. So we have to consider what kind of the world our children will live in. Now, at the same time, global warming is a reality. It's now predicted the next 60 or 70 years, London and New York can be underwater. So the children of today will live in a very different world 
thing you and I know. We know that the glaciers are melting. We know that water levels will rise. And therefore, people living in the highlands or in the coastal regions, they will be forced inland. We're talking about hundreds of thousands of people moving with no coordination, needing health care, surveillance, security, food, and a, and a support system. We are not thinking about providing that. And when these people come together, there's going to be so much social struggle. Every person wants security and safety. There won't be that. And this means that the global security system must increase security, must increase surveillance to make sure a level of stability and harmony for all people. This means that if we continue to create the same model citizen as we have been doing for the past 150 years, then these people cannot be trusted by this system. Therefore, it means that due to the increase of security and surveillance, there will be no more democracy. Now, I spent almost all of my working life talking and, and considering this. And so what I want to say to you in the very short time we've got together is how we may begin to change this. Um, I have written seven books about this, and we can talk about these another time. Basically, the illusion of education explains why intelligence, ex sorry, explains why school does not teach children how to think. We don't teach children how to reason. We don't teach them how to think. Because the 19th century model we work on processes children on what we think is intelligence, but isn't. It's their language skills to either become the manager or the managed. To become the manager, they have to go to university. So there's techniques, there's strategies in every society and in every education to make some children go to university where they are taught higher evaluators thinking skills. But the rest, the normal children, they're not taught how to think in school. They, we raise them on dualistic thinking. So when they go to college or work, whatever, they have a lower level of thinking. In the home, in the evening, they're entertained by television programs that reduce their intelligence. This is a program, and it basically means that the system can survive better by a select number of people guiding the greater number. These greater number are trained to be compliant with education, with the teacher. We do this in school now. We teach children to say, what is this? What should I do? When we're teaching children to do that, we are raising them in a mindset to be compliant in the citizen, in the society. Now my second book, The Hidden Secrets of Intelligence, proves why intelligence is not genetically inherited. This is a very important aspect because in many societies, they believe that intelligence is created, uh, is inherited. So that for example, in America, they say white people are genetically more intelligent than black people. It's not true. It's all based on distorted information, but whatever. My third book, The Brain and Environment the Complex, is a new concept to what intelligence is and how the brain works. Basically, it comes down to love. I'll explain to you. Love. So we have mediation. Then we have preparing a new world education uh, and whatever, and the other books I've written, which are very helpful. But basically, what I want to explain to you now is how school actually works. Just one moment, I think I'm going to get, get the right thing. Okay. Now, we have the idea. The children learn in school according to their ability. Their ability is defined by what they inherited, plus or minus the drives and the problems they've got in life, as Dr. Fr um, Frizan was talking about. The reality is that, that any normally born child, in, any normally born child can get very, very high grades in school and obtain any job they want to. But as I've explained to you, school and society doesn't want that to happen. The purpose of school is to allow some children to become the professional class, some children become the engineering class, and some children to become the working class. We have to change that. And if we're going to change it, we need to realize that school does not work on intelligence, school works on languages. And there are two languages. One is mathematics, and the other is English, French, German, whatever it is. 
And these languages work on rules. Now, let me get, now, if the child learns the rule, they know how to think. So when they're given a learning task, they can negotiate through it. This is fun. They're inspired. Now, in the West, we spend a huge amount of money on creative classrooms, trying to make the students creative in their thinking. It makes no difference. The designer desks, the designer classrooms, the multi-billion pound school, the implements that look nice and fun make no difference to the creativity of the child. Creativity comes from inside you when you know you're good and something is interesting and fun to do. So if the child learns the rule, they know how to think, this is fun, then they apply that rule in different subjects, then they are creative. Now let me give you an example of what I'm talking about here. If you understand the rules of mathematics, you'll be very good in mathematics. Then you'll be very good in sciences, chemistry and physics, because you know how to think. Look at, the, look at the equation here. Six divided by two, two plus one. Let's look at two students. One student who learned the rule and one student who didn't learn the rule. Can I just give me a second? <coughs> Just one second. Sorry, just trying to find this. Oh, hold on a second. Now, this student, when the teacher was explaining the rule, they were not listening. They were bored. Or, like Dr. Frizan was saying, they were distracted by some fear. There was that they're going to be bullied, or somebody is hurting them in some way. So the mind is not concentrated. What we need to understand is that it is not the brain that does any work. When we see a child writing something, we think they are clever or they are not clever. It's got nothing to do with the brain. The brain is guided by the mind and the heart. Now the human mind is always searching for security. So if the child in school is distracted by some fear, their mind will be searching. If they feel a sense of insecurity, then, then they will be searching and not listening to the rule. To get, them, to get the child learning, we have to get the heart. Now the heart is 40,000 neurons, it's not just there to pop love. So it means the teacher must inspire the class to have love, kindness and confidence and make the lesson interesting. And if they can do that, then the students will focus on the rule. Now this student didn't focus on the rule. So when the teacher was explaining, he wasn't listening. When the teacher said, okay, please, please uh, do your example, he didn't know how to think, so he used logic. And he said, well, okay, two plus one is three, and two times three is six, so six divided by six is one. No, it's wrong, but he doesn't know why. Now this school, this school is Sorry, sir, you only have two minutes left. Well, basically, uh, we need more time here. But what I'm explaining to you is that okay. we, need, we need to change the whole school system. Do not use roads. If you use roads, it's part of the 19th century design to create inequality. You need a classroom like this. If you can create a classroom where the teacher can move around and help the children, when they make that mistake, then you can develop them bit by bit by bit. My friends, I need two hours to explain to you a basic idea of how this works. I hope I can come back. But if you can create a classroom like this, then you can help all your children to focus, to learn, to interact, and you can develop them. And most importantly, you can give them the confidence to interact. Now, uh, there's so much I want to explain to you. But it's important that you understand that the way we are educating today belongs to a world that no longer exists. The world of our children will require a different kind of education. It requires teachers to have more patience, 
more tolerance, more understanding of how to inspire children to learn and not just to give information. Well, uh, okay, I mean, obviously, there's a great deal and I hope that I can come again and talk to you more. But please, now you may ask me questions if you like for the time that we've got left. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, uh, Professor Anderson. Uh, we can uh, continue with the uh, question answer after this session. Okay, that was the fantastic presentation from uh, Professor Anderson, and please give him a virtual applause. Thank you very much, Professor. Uh, yeah, you you explain so many important information for us uh, with different uh, students how to improve their intelligence and so many things you have shared. And it was very useful for all of us. Okay, uh, because we have uh, one more speaker, so uh, we have to turn to last speaker, uh, the third speaker. Uh, and all after all the speakers, we will continue with the question and answer session. So I uh, would like to remind to all the participants who wants to please write down your question on the chat box, uh, mention your name country. Okay. Our last, uh, our last speaker is come from Philippines. Um, he is Chris Tizita Master of Art M N H S Department of Education, Batangas Province, Philippines. In this time, uh, Dr. Juan educated educator with extensive experience developing curriculum and delivering exceptional educational excellence in secondary education, such as knowledge instruction, educational leadership, classroom management, and peace Okay, so all participants, please, uh, can you mute your mail? Thank you. Please. Okay, I will check. Dr. Juan, are you there? Dr. Dr. Christy Zita, yeah, I'm so sorry. Christy Zita, yeah. Okay, how are you? Uh, just fine, okay. Thank you for the individual at the National Conference. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, I will give you. Twenty minutes for present, and we will continue time to present your presentations. Please have your time. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Okay, so this is my presentation. Can you see my presentation now? Yes. Yes, sir. Okay, so, so again, good afternoon, everyone. So I would like to take this opportunity to uh, thank the organizers of this virtual international conference with the theme, Innovation of Learning in Higher Education and the New Normal. With our special thanks and special mention to my two friends, Dr. Mutmaina and Dr. Andy, for 
giving me this another opportunity to talk uh, to our Indonesian partners and to other participants of this conference. So today I'll be presenting or discussing about Okay, so I've been a speaker for around nine times in different conferences on where of a man is not where he stands in moments of comfort and convenience, but where he stands in times of challenge and controversy. That is by Martin Luther King Jr. Okay, so let's start with English language education. So we all know that English is one of the most dominating languages of the world, having its impact on every field of work. Undoubtedly, English play a much greater role in the world that is inevitable for people to ignore it fully. Here are some of the 10 reasons why we need such important language to every individual and to any race or nationality. So the first one is it's the most commonly spoken language in the world. There are approximately 400 million native speakers and English is understood and or spoken by around 1 to 1.6 billion people with over a quarter of the world speaking the language. So there's always someone to practice with, especially when you travel. Next, it's the language of international business. Most world business headquarters are predominantly in the financial hubs of the United Kingdom and United States of America. So English has been long the default language of trade, as you can read in the history of English language. So therefore, we can conclude that English is dominant business language and it has become almost a necessity for speaker or for people to speak English if they are to enter a global workforce. Third, most movies are in English. Hollywood is a powerhouse of global entertainment. So it's natural that English would become the main language for movie making. Movies are opened up over a subtitle, but they are really best enjoyed in the language in which they were intended. Fourth, it's easy to learn. Okay, why is it easy to learn? Because it's really generally accepted that English isn't the most taxing language or the difficult language to understand. The vocabulary is simple to understand and it has developed throughout different languages regarding its evolution that is explained in the article about history of language. Fifth, it helps you understand other languages. Okay? English has a long and fascinating history that spans wars, invasions, and influences from around the globe. Cultures that have helped shape modern English include the Romans, the Vikings, and the French, making English language a hybrid language comprised of Latin, Germanic, and Roman elements. Sixth, you can say things in a hundred different ways. One of English's best assets is the flexibility you can often find many different ways to explain the same thing, and that is thanks to its wide range of vocabulary. It's said to have, well, over 750,000 words, and is adding new ones every year, as mentioned in the article about the history of English language. Seven, it can be used around the world. English is also hugely important as an international language and plays an important part even in the countries where the United Kingdom has historically had little influence. It is learned as a principal foreign language in most schools in Western Europe. It is also an essential part of the curriculum in far flung places like Japan and South Korea and it is increasingly seen as desirable by millions of speakers in China. So therefore, if you have the basics of English language, you can make yourself understood in nearly every corner of the world. A, it's really flexible. Non-native English speakers will learn it as a second language 
often comment on how many ways there are to say things. That's because English doesn't discriminate. You can use it however, however you like it. Countries like Singapore have taken this concept to heart, inventing an entire absurd facets of other languages like Chinese and Malay. It's the language of the internet. Most of the content produced on the internet, that is roughly 50% is in English. So knowing English will allow you to access to an incredible amount of information which may not be otherwise available in other sources. And then it continues to change. Selfie, hashtagging, blogging, and others. All these words are not part of the original language or English language, but have already become valued members of the lexicon. More than any other language, English continues to evolve and absorb new words that branch out, often untranslated, into other languages. Every year, approximately more than 1,000 new and approved words are added to the Oxford Dictionary. This tremendous development is the result due to technology, social media, and how people spontaneously coin new words during daily life. More information you can find in the article also of the history of English language. Now let's go to the 10 trends and innovation in English language teaching by Xu Wan Xuan Chong in 2018. So let's have blended learning and mobile learning. So start with blended learning. So from the word itself, blended. So as teachers combine digital media with more traditional forms of teaching, their course materials and resources reflect the trend. So this is a combination of face-to-face -face teaching and online lessons. So online creative activities for blended learning emphasizes the interaction between teachers and the learners themselves. For mobile lear learning, word itself mobile, online resources are more accessible with a mobile app or a mobile friendly that turns vocabulary learning into a fun, competitive game you could play with your friends. Essential English Oxford, according to the Essential English Oxford University Press, which uses mobile technology to provide free resources for teachers and students, including flashcards, Facebooks, lesson plans, and other activities. Gamification. So as appealing to football players, an example of a game by LearnMax, which uses training sessions, friendly matches, uh, cups, uh, leagues and cups games to make vocabulary learning fun for young learners. Get Set Go, Phonics by the Oxford University Press that uses chants, songs, and games to help develop preschool children's phonological awareness. So that means there's game involved so that learners, especially young ones, will be able to absorb the learning strategies or the learning skills that they need to have. Next, we have embodied learning. So embodied learning is based on the idea that learning is not just about remembering. It involves using mind and the body, collaborating, discussing, and exploring. Learners need to emotionally or to be emotionally, intellectually, physically, and socially engaged. Let's have inquiry-based learning or learning in a complex world. So the scenarios that teachers come across in some course materials can seem be simplified and unrealistic, leading to us to wonder if we are adequately training our learners to be real life in the life of the 21st century, okay? English as a lingua franca. So when the concept of English as a lingua franca was first discussed by teachers, academics, writers, and trainers, it was controversial. Why? Because many refused to consider how the concept of English as an international language might fit into course materials and language teaching. But today, we see resource materials like the front pack and other many resources that are taking a non-prescriptive approach to accent and instead of focusing on increased intelligibility as the objective. So it uses elements of blended learning and gamification. Next, we have 
multiliteracies, and translanguaging. In global communities where English is common language of communication alongside other languages, knowledge of other languages is an asset. Rather than diminish the learner's first language, teachers also are encouraging learners to use other or their own languages. This requires complex social and cognitive skills. In contrast, strict English-only classrooms are slowly becoming a thing of the past. Such linguistic diversity is celebrated in course like the Family Skills Toolkit, which is a learning strategy or a learning platform, supporting learners of specific needs. As globalization takes hold, globalization or global localization, meaning adopting an international product to match what people want in their particular country or culture becomes necessary. The more we understand individual learners, needs, the more we can tailor our lessons to suit them. Creating and sharing content. So while there's much online content already out there for learners, some programs and apps allow learners to produce their own content and at the same time share it with their fellow learners. Okay, uh, an example of this popular online site is the Quizzes. Okay, then we have also the Canva. So, Learning and Teaching Management Platforms, or the LMS. Learning management platforms, just like the Edmodo, are increasingly popular. They give learners an online way to find handouts, continue classroom discussions, and submit homework. Now, online platforms are also used to communicate with parents and other stakeholders and give teachers and administrators a better overview of the curriculum and help manage lesson plans and materials. Let's go to remote learning. Okay, I have here the different types of, 10 different types of e-learning. Actually, these are just some of the 10, but are, there are so many ways on how we can have e-learning education or continue learning through education, especially nowadays the pandemic is here. There's no face-to-face -face class. All is done through the internet. Let's have the computer managed learning system or computer managed learning, the CML, and the counterpart, the computer assisted instruction. So computer managed learning systems are operate through information databases. This databases contains bits of information which the student has to learn together with the number of ranking parameters or challenges or limitations. Next, computer assisted instruction is another type of learning which uses computers together with traditional teaching. These computer assisted training methods use a combination of multimedia such as text, graphics, sounds, and others to enhance learning. Okay, next we have synchronous and asynchronous learning. So meaning synchronous learners study together at the same time in specific time, while asynchronous or learners can learn uh, their own specific time depending on their flexibility or their work preferences or study preferences. its original state and all the students receive the internet make it possible to adapt and redesign learning materials for its individual learning needs. Linear learning and interactive online learning so when referring to human computer or computer interaction, that means without exception, or it doesn't go back, there's no feedback. While in the interactive online learning, there's a social interaction between the learner and the uh, facilitator of learning. So learning is receiving and at the same time responding. You don't, it is not only receiving everything, but also you can respond or communicate with one another. So it's an interactive, you can interact. Next we have individual 
Almost done. Okay, okay. okay. I'm almost done. Okay, so individual online learning again is uh, from the word itself, individual. It, you work by yourself, you do all the activities by yourself. For collaborative online learning, you have the chance to work or to have a team to work together on a particular project. Uh, now, everyone is at home and professionals and students are looking for ways on how to improve their learning skills or their skills in the English language. Uh, there are so many e-learning platforms that use or offer online courses. You can just go to Udemy, uh, Teachable, with IQ, the Rizoku, Educadium. We have also the Learn Worlds, uh, Think F8, and then we have Academy of Mind, the Coursecraft, Of course, the popular one is uh, the e learning platforms are okay. you can use for your online class. We have Edmodo, Weeper, Microsoft 365, Google Classroom, Flipgrid, Meet, Zoom, the Facebook well, Messenger, and others. Okay? Uh, I hope I was able to at least impart some details on information, especially for those who are in line with the English language teaching to at least improve themselves. And at the same time, we will be able to improve our learners' skills in the English. Back to the moderator. Okay, thank you very much, uh, uh, Dr. Sir Chris Zuyan. Uh, thank you very much. Okay, um, yes. because we have a limited time, uh, we only have 10 minutes uh, for questions and answers. And I already uh, I have uh, three questions for all the speakers, uh, but we are so sorry to say that the prop and the descent already left. So uh, for uh, who gave the question to him, uh, he will answer your question through your email, inshallah. Okay, so uh, this is the first question to uh, Dr. Umar. Dr. Umar, I hope you are there. And we can continue with discussion because we have only 10 minutes for this uh, session. Okay, um, the first question is uh, for Dr. Umar. Um, this is from Siti Fatima, Indonesia. The question is, um, have the researcher predict uh, from the bug data what the effect of not no, uh, to the world ten years later. So, what is what? What? How to be a researcher? Doctor Omar, please uh, answer the question. Hello, Doctor Omar, are you there? Okay. Dr. Umar. Dr. Umar uh, will answer uh, your questions from uh, Sister Siti Fatima. How the researcher predict the data to uh, begin the research? Okay, that's a um, good question, I think, from Siti uh, Fatima. Well, research-based learning is try try to inform the students in in learning by doing research. This is this is uh, the key. 
and the student and the teacher can be can join together in the research or the student can can do the research uh, by herself or I mean his or herself in terms of uh, doing or understanding a certain certain theories the implementation of certain uh, theories relative to the question about uh, the the data bank data bank data is it is in general question for students who are studying at the university it depend on the major of the student is itself do not move from uh, our major at all the students uh, major in the level of university many many kind of uh, major of course in the education faculty they are major like uh, math major science major natural science major language major and many kind of major but do not make conduct any research outside the major it is it is the key it is the key because uh, research is learning try then do not learn by memorizing the story the, the theories but they try to see the implementation of theories related to to research which are uh, using a certain technology of course the existence of the use of ten technology is itself must be provided maybe by the student or maybe by the, the university the, this is very important do not conduct a research we cannot you can which you cannot get the data this is the key you cannot okay. do the research without <laughs> any data so make sure that you can do a research using the equipment or the sources yeah. that you have in your environment okay thank you dr umar uh, i think we already get the main answer from dr umar so you have to um, make sure that if you want to do research you have to make sure that you can get the data yeah that was a very great answer um so this is the second answer for dr umar from sapi uh wins bandung uh, the, uh, the question is how does uh, Yayan Samarinda solve the problem when there are students who experience difficulty of signal or what? So how do cannot, how do you think, Dr. Umar? I, I cannot hear. If there yeah. is uh, some student of Yayan Samarinda, yeah, get. I cannot hear you the cannot question. Hear me? Yes, Hello? I cannot hear the question. Hello. Uh, I lose the signal. I cannot okay, the question. I will repeat the Okay, yes, I'm sorry, Dr. Omar. I will repeat the questions. Uh, the question is, how does IIN Samarinda solve the problem when there are students who uh, difficult, who has difficult on get signal or connection and internet quota? <laughs> how yeah. to solve that yeah. problem? Yes. Yeah. Uh, thank you for the question. This is very, very uh, difficult question for many institution. Um, gaining the knowledge is actually is our, our duty, our our own duty actually, not related to the institution. Of course, at EIN Samarinda here we are at, as I know at EIN Samarinda, um, EIN Samarinda has already found the way by making cooperation with with many provider. In Samarinda, with Telkom Cell and also with Indosat and also with uh, XL, and the student could have um, very cheap, very cheap, uh, just 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 uh, what is it? Just uh, purchasing very with, with uh, very cheap, but they can get uh, a big a big data to use the internet. So Alhamdulillah okay. in Samarinda, uh, we have a solution for that. And we have to thank okay. you, the yeah. director of UN Samarinda. Yes. Okay, thank you very much, Dr. Umar. Uh, yeah, uh, this is the last question for uh, Dr. Chris Dita. Yeah, uh, we have, um, 
to make this English language can us innovation in Philippines. Yeah. Also, there are okay. So, yeah. in the Philippines, there are so many activities. Just like uh, what uh, technology that we are using or innovation that we use in, of course, improving the English language of our students is the computer-based learning system, or uh, the speech abilities or the pronunciation skills of our students. So, we use that innovation, which is which was provided to us by a private company. So at least to improve, of course, the speech abilities, and of course, to increase the word power or the knowledge in different words, and to be able to use them in the day-to-day -day classes or day-to-day -day living of our students. So we equip them on how to pronounce words correctly, and at the same time, we provide them with mm -hmm. enough vocabulary so that they can stay uh, because a student cannot speak in, in, in the English language if, does, if he doesn't have any uh, words that he knows that is relevant to their particular situation. So we must first equip them with words or many words so that they will be able to play with those words and be able to speak the English language well. Okay, thank you. Thank you, uh, sir, Chris Gita. Yeah, uh, I think that's all uh, the question and answer session in this session. Uh, I hope all of you are still enjoy this conference because after this session, we will over to the second session as part of this virtual international conference. So please stay, stay join this conference until the end of today's sessions. And I would like to inform you that the next session I will have four speakers and it is very excited. So I make sure you do not go out anywhere and stay tuned. Finally, we come to the last session in the Islamic Institute of Samarinda, Indonesia. The summary is best learning in the new normal COVID-19, a change lecturers and educators to reshape their way of teaching. It consists in two some steps. They are formulating problem, collecting data, analyzing data, concluding, and presentation. So how to uh, innovate uh, in this uh, pandemic? We have to improve our research yeah, to improve our education learning. Okay, and the second is uh, there are 10 uh, reasons why English is very important. And there are 10 trends innovation in English language and supporting learner of specific needs. Yeah, to improve uh, English is uh, a very important language uh, to everyone in this world. And the last is uh, to develop experience developing curriculum. There are four things. Yeah, the reason why school needs to change in the face of artificial intelligence. The problem faced by teacher in educating students prior to this pandemic, the danger of educationalists failing to realize the true design of education and how they work better. Okay, hopefully the information that I have shared in this virtual international conference will be useful for all of us. I appreciate to your cooperation and participation in this conference and we hope you enjoy this conference. Thank you. Stay healthy and keep keep positive. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Okay, all participants. Okay, thank you for all of the presenters and participants of this virtual seminars. All participants, I just want to remind you to not leave this virtual seminar because we are going to have a break for five minutes to prepare our second virtual meetings.
Insyaallah the next virtual seminar will be held at four o'clock in the middle time of Indonesia. Okay, stay tuned. ini cukup besar dan padat memiliki sungai terpanjang dan menggunakan simbol satwa endemik besut ialah kota Samarinda merupakan pusat pemerintahan ibu kota Kalimantan Timur dari masa ke masa kota ini terus menunjukkan peningkatan Tak hanya di sektor perekonomian, namun juga di sektor pendidikan. Institut Agama Islam Negeri Samarinda merupakan pendidikan tinggi pertama yang mengedepankan pengetahuan agama Islam. Merupakan buah tangan dari beberapa tokoh yang tergabung dalam organisasi Islam. Demi meningkatkan mutu pendidikan, IAIN Samarinda terus melakukan serangkaian kerjasama di bidang pendidikan, baik bertaraf nasional maupun internasional, melalui program kerjasama yang dijalin dengan berbagai lembaga terkait. Sejak berdiri, sampai sekarang Institut Agama Islam Negeri IAIN Samarinda telah mengalami sembilan kali periode kepemimpinan. Tokoh-tokoh inilah yang membawa IAIN Samarinda tumbuh dan berkembang dan terus mengalami kemajuan dan peningkatan dari waktu ke waktu. Infrastruktur pendidikan didukung beberapa gedung bertingkat, dilengkapi dengan fasilitas penunjang, berupa gedung perpustakaan, laboratorium, dan masjid untuk praktik ilmu agama Islam dengan menerapkan konsep lingkungan hijau. Tidak hanya pada tumbuh kembang fasilitas, namun juga pengembangan pada fakultas dan jurusan seperti Fakultas Tarbiyah dan Ilmu Keguruan Fakultas Syariah Fakultas Ekonomi dan Bisnis Islam Fakultas Usfuluddin Adab dan Dakwah
Oke, okay. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. All participants before the moderator start, I am as co-moderator once again would like to announce you some important information related to this conference. <clears throat> First, <clears throat> the certificate will be available for those at least 30 minutes in our session from day one to three of our virtual international and Second, the e-certificate link for your participation can be you know, obtained by private Our automaticalization and participation is very highly appreciated. Thank you. Stay healthy and keep positive. And I over to our moderator, Mrs. Nadia Shahya MPD. I'm Thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Hello, speakers and participants. Good afternoon, good morning, and good evening in some part of the world. Uh, welcome to our second session of the Virtual International Conference under the team Innovation of Learning in Higher Education in the new normal COVID-19, held by State Islamic Institute of Samarinda, East Kalimantan, Indonesia. I am Nadia, as your moderator in this session. It's a great pleasure for me to tell you that of Zoom and our YouTube channel. We are more grateful that they come from many countries all over the world. They come from Tunisia, Taiwan, Nigeria, Palestine, Egypt, Yemen, Iraq, Iran, Bahrain, Mexico, Romania, French, Jordania, Libya, Malaysia, Pakistan, Peru, Saudi Arabia, Sudan, Turkey, United Arab Emirates, Israel, Kuwait, Qatar, Sri Lanka, Montenegro, Macedonia, Mozambique, Nepal, and of course, Indonesia. So thank you very much for joining us today. Before we begin presentation, let me inform you that the conference today will be divided into two parts. that are presentation from four speakers, in this case, there are four speakers. The first one is assist, Assistant Professor Dr. Etta Pedal, PhD. And the second speaker is MD Obaidullah, BAMA. And the third one is Associate Professor Dr. Sherif Mohammed A. Ismail, BSc, MSc, MBA, PhD, PMP. And then we followed by question and answer session. So the fourth speaker, Sorry, in this case, there are three speakers because one, uh, one speaker, will, we need more confirmation from, the, from him. And so uh, the, the four speaker, we have uh, 40 minutes, 40, uh, 15 minutes. Minute. Okay, thank you. So the four speaker will have 80 minutes for presentation and with 50 Like to know what our speaker want to say. So I turn it over to our first speaker, Dr. Atul Petel. Before that, I just want to make sure. Hello, 
Dr. Patil. Dr. Patil, are you here? Okay, while we wait for him, I, I just give you some information about him. Dr. Pirtle works as Assistant Professor of Communication at the College of Workforce Symbiosis International University at its English Language Teaching Institute of Symbiosis as lecturer and senior coordinator for six years. He has been nominated as honorary vice president of the Puneship of India. He also a certified trainer and speaking is a minor for the Cambridge English Language Assessment, which is part of Cambridge University. So Dr. Pedro, are you here? Yes, am I audible? Yes. Yeah, may yeah, I? How are you? Yeah, may I, yeah, I'm fine. Thank you. May I request you to make me a co host so that I can share my presentation? Thank you. Okay, sure. Okay, Dr. Pedro, I begin now? over to you for about eight minutes, 18. Yes, yeah, sure. Thank you very much. Welcome. Hello, everyone. Salam alaikum from India. I am really glad to be part of this virtual international conference. I thank the organizer for this wonderful opportunity. The title of my presentation is Teachnology, which is a combination of teaching and technology. And I'm going to talk about technology in the light of the new normal. So when we talk about using technology, there are many aspects that we need to consider. And especially after this pandemic, we really need to be on our toes and teach effectively. When we talk about technology, and when we see how language has improved over the period of time, what words you see on the screen, for example, window was just a small square hole in a house. Application was something written on a piece of paper. Keyboard was the piano. Mouse was just an animal. File was an important official document. Hard drive was a very long, hectic car tree. Cut was done with a knife and paste was done with glue. Wave was a spider's house and virus was flu. Apple and blackberry were only fruits. Now today things have changed drastically. All these words have received different meanings because of the influence of technology. And with this new normal, what you see the traditional are now everything is happening online and we as teachers really need to be prepared for that. Now the question technology to use or not to use is no longer a question of debate. It was a question of debate just a couple of months ago before this pandemic was broken out. Now it is no longer a question. So we as teachers have to use this technology but we have to remember that technology is a double-edged sword. It can harm as well as it can benefit us. So as a teacher, we really need to have a good balance between this because when we talk about technology, we really need to have balance. Like if this is technology, one side is very sharp, the other side is very bold and we really need to have a balance. So when I use technology, I should be able to have a balance like this these both the sides. So having balance is very important. Not more use of technology, not less of technology. Now thousands of rupees or dollars have been invested in many colleges. That is not the problem. Many colleges have good infrastructure. But the problem is there hasn't been any established and tested model on how teachers should collaborate and teach with technology. Whatever we are doing, we are just doing with experiments practically because we have no other choice now during this pandemic period. And therefore we are experimenting, probably we would take some time. But well, while we do this, we should be able to understand the attitude of students 
and attitude of teachers when we use technology. Let us talk about students. If you see students, how they learn English, like they are asked to write things that you see on the screen. The child has written good, bad, you know, black, white, original China instead of artificial. Now, another problem is in assessment. If we give assessment equally to everyone and if we assess them, for example, here, if you see for a fair selection, if everyone has to climb the tree, if that is the exam, other animals will not be able to climb the tree. Very few animals will be able to climb because they have different multiple intelligences. Similarly, our students have different intelligences. Some of them are auditory learners. Some of them are kinesthetic learners. Some of them are visual learners. And if we apply the same principle, one principle or one method with them, then there will be a failure. So as teachers, we have to adopt different methods. When we talk about we as teachers, most of us are digital immigrants when we use technology, whereas our students are digital natives. They can learn things on their own. Like in India, there, is, there was a project called Hole in Wall by uh, you know, an engineer called Subhat Mitra. What he did was he went to a small village and he installed a computer in a wall like this and there was nobody. So students from that village, those who were even illiterate, came to that wall and then they started learning the computer on their own. And slowly the number increased and they started teaching other villagers, other students how to learn computer. So what we understand from this is students are digital natives. They don't need any training. They know how to use technology. But we as teachers really need to gear up. We need to understand that there are changes. Students are digital natives, but we really need to learn. So when we learn, the new normal is what is bringing. Everything is now digitalized. Everything is just a click away. So teachers have to teach, record their lectures. Everything is online, books, whatever we need, everything is online. And this is how the student's attitude is. Like the student here is asking the teacher to see her, you know, his homepage for homework. Now, uh, dad is saying, uh, you know, this is previous, before the lockdown, like dad was asking, how was your school? And the child is saying, you can read all about this on my blog, dad. Another mother is convincing the child that it was not downloaded, but it was born. So this is how children think. Look at this gentleman, he's getting drowned into water and he's simply saying F1, F1, instead of just saying help, help. So this is how things are changing. This is a conversation between a father and a son. So father writes, dear Andy, how have you been? You and your mother and I are fine. We miss you. Please sign up your computer and come downstairs for something to eat. So they are in the same house, but they are chatting with each other. Now, how things have changed over a period of time because of the advancement in technology. Earlier, we used to have an eraser to deal with our mistakes. Then we started using Whitener. 2012 onwards, we use only two keys, Control and Z. And you know this traditional story of thirsty crow. The crow was thirsty. It went for, for search of water from one place to another. It didn't get water. Ultimately, it landed at a place where there was a small pot of water. But the problem was the level of water was very low. So what it had to do, it got pebbles and put them into the jar one after another. But this is traditional story. This is traditional crow. Look at the modern crow. Modern crow doesn't spend time. It simply gets a straw and drinks water. This is what technology can help us. So we should also be like smart crow, the modern crow as teachers and teach our students to save time and be more effective. Because today, basic human needs are there, but even Wi-Fi or access to the internet has also become one of the basic needs. And when we talk about using language by youth, this is how they use language, not only words and phrases or sentences, they use acronyms like these. Uh, if we are able to guess the meaning, then we know their language. If you are not able to guess, then this is how they communicate with each other. Like LOL stands for laughing out loud, BRB, be right back, and so on. Not only words, but they also use different symbols that you see on the screen. All these symbols are used in their day-to-day -day conversation. So we should also be able to understand how they communicate with each other. So if we step, step down to their level, probably we will be understand, we will be able to understand their requirements. Now, after this new normal, after 
the lockdown is over this is what is going to happen the new schools where will be there will be a place where students take responsibility of their learning they are constantly engaged in higher order thinking skill activities they work collaboratively they work with each other and there will be no fixed time table uh, you know like a schedule and classroom will always utilize space in a meaningful way and the teacher will not be only the source of knowledge teacher will not be the sage on the stage our role will be like a facilitator a guide and we will be using blended learning and flipped classroom methods so the possibilities are endless of course this pandemic has been very bad uh, you know throughout uh, the world but for teachers i think this has been a blessing in disguise because we are now going to witness a new future so welcome to the future where we will be using technology we will be exploring call and mall computer assisted language learning and mobile assisted language learning and uh, when it comes to elt english language teaching we have you know explored technology quite often but what happens is when our students face uh, difficulties like when they face an interview for example if you see my video i have a bottle of water and three cups in my hand there is nothing in the cup the water in this bottle represents knowledge so when i take the first cup that is the teacher so we consume some knowledge as teacher we consume some knowledge now our responsibility is to pass on that knowledge to the second cup that is the student so we pass on that knowledge to the student now what is the student's role the student's role is to pass on that knowledge to the third person like employer so how much knowledge they are able to reproduce this much knowledge they are able to reproduce so the question is where does the water go the water vanishes and therefore we really need to ensure that we are able to help them so this is the problem with students that we need to overcome in the last 25 years this is what has happened students uh, you know have also seen this and therefore in the next 25 years what is going to happen we have to prepare for that because technology has always changed language when there was printing language change when telephone came into picture language change when broadcasting came into picture again language change and today with the help of technology internet again language is changing so language is the only change we can see that with this pandemic that is going on uh, everywhere we have new vocabulary in english many new words have been added that you see on the screen and therefore language is the only thing that keeps on changing and we as teachers have to really ensure that we incorporate all these things and teach our students because like albert einstein said we should give conditions to students so that they learn and when we talk about bloom's taxonomy uh, that is the basic taxonomy but that has been revised and now it is bloom's digital taxonomy which we have to take into picture when we teach with technology when we talk about learning learning is not always complete at every stage and therefore technology can help us uh, reinforce learning digital media can offer this opportunity they can revisit they can watch our videos again so that is an advantage when we use digital platforms and we can also inculcate critical and creative thinking but remember technology cannot substitute teachers but teachers who have good use of technology can do miracles and teachers who do not use technology might be replaced by teachers who use technology and therefore language learning is not only within the four classrooms now everybody is listening to us we are online parents are listening to us the world world is watching us and therefore we really need to prepare ourselves for this new challenges when we talk about different learning styles mobile learning and online learning can help us incorporate this even 21st century skills we can incorporate this when we use technology and last point that i'd like to make is when we teach with technology we need to be good at this feedback framework what is that now earlier when we didn't use technology we had only pedagogical knowledge when we started teaching we then had content knowledge that is ck so we only had combination of content and pedagogy but now it is technology so when we combine all the three we get technological pedagogical content knowledge and that is something which is very important now technology should be used according to the context according to the situation for example if i ask you this question if this person lets the block of the wood drop where will it go obviously we will say it will fall down 
but it will not only fall it will answer will depend on where the person is if the person is on the earth it will fall down if the person is in ocean under water the block of wood will go up and if the person is in the space it will be in the air itself so we should use technology but we should know where we are and how we are going to use it in the context yes, now when we talk about technology for example if i have to teach okay. listening i should decide my content then i should go for you know what is the pedagogy that i am going to use and then technology so technology should come last what happens if we decide technology first then we go for pedagogy and content first we should go for content then pedagogy and then technology technology is very useful but we should talk about this depending on what content and pedagogy i am going to use so in a nutshell what we understand is technology can help us very uh, you know to a large extent for all these things that you see on the screen but we should really ensure that we use it judiciously we understand the context and only prepare our lessons and last i would like to say that technology cannot replace teachers the role of teachers is going to change but technology will always be there uh, these are my contact details i also have my youtube channel called dr atul atul patil last point that i'd like to make is we invest lot of money and uh, we invest lot of money and teach what happens is even as parents for example we invest lot of money so when we invest money like this let's see what is the output the input is money i invest money and what is the output is for example any degree like this is an engineering degree so when we invest this this is what is expected and it is our responsibility that when parents invest money they need a degree like this but only degree is not going to help students should be effective communicators they should be good at soft skills they should be good at communication skills because it is said that hard skills or technical skills can only give them an interview but it is soft skills that will give them a job and therefore the responsibility lies on our shoulders whether it is the new normal or any other challenge that comes to us we should be prepared for this and we should give our best and teach and make the change in the world that's all from my side thank you very much for this opportunity once again thank you okay thank you very much dr pedro that was really great presentation and now we are going to the next session that is question and answer we will check if there is any question from a participant okay let let me check okay there's no uh, question and it's really really great presentation and i like it and maybe all of you know to uh, like it too so now uh, we move to our second presenter that is um, associate professor dr sherif mohammed a ismail bsc msc mba phd pmp dean egyptian germany academy from egypt Okay, let me check. Um, Dr. Sharif, how are you? Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Good morning or good evening. You ready? Assalamu alaikum is better than <laughs> all greetings. Uh, anyways, I, I want to share my uh, please. Okay, before you begin, okay. I, I'll, I'll give a little description about you to our audience. our participants okay. um okay uh dr sharif mohammed ismail bsc msc mba phd pmp dean edition germany academy egypt he has a strong background in theoretical and practical aspect of management information system he received his undergraduate degree in computer science master of science in software engineering as well as MBA from Ain Shams University Egypt and then he received his PhD in management and appointed as senior lecturer at University of Health and assistant professor at the University of Teman 
assistant professor at Umakura University and senior lecturer at American University. His research lies mainly in the L, national language processing, knowledge management, and sentiment analysis. So Mr. Ismail, I'll call you Mr. Ismail, is it correct? Okay. 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 Uh, Bismillah wa salatu wa salam ala Sayyidina wa Nabiina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Rabbi shuhli sadri wa yassir li amri wa ahlil uqdatan min lisani yafqahu qawli. Firstly, thank you so much for this kind invitation to participate with all of you. Dear speakers and the participants, I'm honored to be with you. Uh, my name is uh, Dr. Sharif uh, uh, Ismail. I'm Associate Professor in Management uh, Information System. I would like to share some thoughts uh, with you under the title of Open Educational uh, Resources and the MOOC. Actually, during the COVID-19 crisis, can, uh, countries have implemented a, a range of measures to curb the educational impact of uh, the pandemic and uh, empowering the usage of artificial intelligence, intelligence in learning by the way that makes uh, the artificial intelligence may replace the human soon in different uh, uh, sector of industry world. But the industry faces a unique opportunity this on the earth and to provide them all ways access uh, to uh, insightful, uh, valuable content. There are three areas, creation, distribution, and consumption. Actually, uh, uh, if we will talk about distribution over the past uh, 20 years, we have seen a significant change in the way content uh, uh, is distributed in the past a uh, student had to be in classroom, but now educational and institution like MIT <coughs> and Harvard and the even private companies like uh, B&G and uh, General Electric <coughs> are offering students uh, from around the world opportunities to attend their own version of massive open uh, uh, online courses, what we call it MOOC. So our topic today is the MOOC. Let, let's go for our outline. Uh, I will cover these uh, 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 items, current uh, uh, evolution and learning, open educational resource and MOOC, uh, and finally an instructional design uh, for MOOC. Uh, first, let us talk about uh, what we call it current evolution and learning. Uh, there is no doubt there is a relation between education versions, uh, we can call it as a, as a versions, uh, one to four, and also what we call it web, web technology versions. So there is a relation. When we uh, start with the web one, what we call it, the web includes uh, uh, such a file server, databases, web search engine static uh, website, we find that education focus on memorization. When we move to uh, uh, web two, we find uh, what we call it social, web, include email, an instant message, uh, social network, that mirror or affect the education uh, version number two which focus on internet enabled learning and teaching. After that, web number three or version three, uh, 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 what we call it the semantic web includes semantic source, ontology, semantic knowledge, management knowledge bases that also uh, 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 mirror and affected the education version three, which aims for empowering students to produce knowledge. Semantic uh, search, by the way, uh, 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 we can define as the ability of search engines to consider the intent and cont contextual meaning for, of search phrases uh, uh, when serving content to user on, uh, on the web. Finally, we, uh, 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 we go for web four uh, and educational four, 
Wave four, we, we call it as ubiquitous uh, uh, wave includes semantic agent ecosystem, automatic intellectual property. So uh, we find this version or the last version we live now uh, uh, of education, we call it version or education uh, uh, four, it related to industry for also that focus on industry development using empowering students to produce innovative using uh, 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 using artificial intelligence and other modern uh, uh, tools. Actually, all the web version focus connect knowledge, but web four which focus on connect intelligence. Uh, let us. Uh, talk about current context, actually there is a force of uh, what we call it community. Uh, number one, uh, content. Actually the quality content is a great way to attract people who are needed to form the uh, elusive community that your uh, brand is hoping well to help build. When considering community initiatives, there are three questions to ask yourself. Where will the content come from? Does it provide uh, uh, in, uh, in uh, disputable value? Can a regular flow of quality content uh, be maintained? The second item, um, what we call it context. Context means understanding how to meet people where they are up and uh, uh, serving up the right uh, experience at the right time. Well designed application and functionality uh, and your course have great opportunity to, to deliver on context. Context means investing time uh, in knowing how your users will want to engage with uh, uh, their community. The third element, what we call it connectivity. Connectivity uh, can be the new uh, term for uh, customer relationship management, how you will react, how you will connect with the student or with your client, but require people to be minding it. Uh, uh, using software uh, and communities which uh, thrive over, evolve over time to meet evolving needs of users need to be flexible to evolve over time while still providing a valuable and uh, uh, consistent use over time. Uh, let us talk about what kind of impact on learning resources and uh, environment. Actually, uh, 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 if we can uh, divide, we see e-learning, m-learning, you uh, learning. Meaning of e-learning is a term that means something different at most everyone who use it. Some use the term to refer to um, a, a batch content pieces and other to technical infrastructures. Something only uh, of uh, a web based self study, while other realizes e learning can uh, encompass real time learning and collaboration. Almost all agree that e learning is an effective method that should be blended into technologies to deliver a, a broad array of training solutions. Um, Regarding this, m learning is the idea that students can learn from any place uh, at any time using the portable learning devices, uh, m-learning or mobile learning is any sort of learning that uh, takes advantage of learning, uh, decreases limitation of learning locations through uh, the mobility of uh, a portable device. In fact, uh, 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 m-learning is convenient in the sense that it is accessible for uh, virtual anywhere um, which you provide access to all the different learning material available. The most significant rule 
uh, of ubiquitous computing technology uh, in new learning is to con uh, construct and build uh, ubiquitous learning environment. <laughs> will bring a classroom to the, uh, the world. By the way, let us uh, uh, go for a definition of open educational resource based on UNESCO definition. Open, resor open educational resource are teaching learning uh, or uh, uh, research materials that are in the public uh, domain or related with an uh, intellectual property license that allow for free use, adoption, or adaptation, and distribution. Uh, open uh, educational resource also promote sharing and give the uh, teacher or student the possibility to make his or her own version in their own context. Open teaching a practice of using technology to open formal university courses for free to uh, enable informal participation by individual not officially enrolled in the, uh, uh, in the course. Uh, now let us go for the uh, principle uh, of open educational resources. There are uh, uh, what we call it 5R we use uh, uh, as a principle for uh, what we call it for open educational resources. Uh, um, reuse the most uh, basic level of openness. People are allowed to use all or uh, part of the work of uh, what we call it for, uh, for their own purpose. Uh, for example, download an educational uh, video to watch at uh, later time. Uh, the second uh, what we call it, uh, re redistribute. People can share the work with others. For example, send a digital article by email to uh, a, a colleague. Revised people can adapt, modify, translate, or change the work. Uh, for example, take a, 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 a book written in English and turn it into a Spanish audio uh, book. Remix, people can take two or more existing resource and combine them to create a new resource. For example, take audio lecture from one course and combine them with slides from another course to create a new uh, derivative, uh, uh, derivative uh, uh, work. Retain no digital rights, um, management restriction, the content is used to keep whether you're uh, the author uh, uh, an instructor using the material or a student. So actually, uh, uh, I bought as a, a, a brief, retain, make uh, and own a copy, reuse, use uh, what we call it in a wide range of ways, adapt, modify, uh, improve, what we call it revise, remix means combine two uh, uh, or more, and finally, uh, redistribute. Uh, there are a lot. There are a lot of benefits of OER actually for uh, uh, learner. Uh, for example, uh, learning to learn autonomy as the, uh, in learning, access to various learning resources, acquisition of uh, trans several uh, digital competences. Uh, learning for formal or informal learning. Also, a uh, teacher can benefit from OER uh, by save time, pedagogical innovation like uh, what we call it flipped classes, uh, visibility for learning resources produced, more interaction in uh, teaching. Uh, in general, also universities can benefit from this OER, sharing of learning resources, teaching staff, student, administrative staff, better support for new teacher, disability, and uh, opening of 
the university on the environment. Actually, one of the big uh, 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 progress and achievement in uh, educational era, uh, what we call it MOOC. MOOC actually uh, stand for Massive Open Online Courses. Uh, we consider as a set of classes or um, a plan of a study on a particular subject, usually leading to an exam or qualification. Um, also, uh, 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 it is a numerous number of subscribers. Student number can be more than 100,000 or more. Student must register in order to follow the course and maintain the, play, the pace and uh, completing the exercise uh, is a crucial element for gaining the certificate. Uh, also, MOOC is online. Online here meaning that all the courses and exercise are organized for delivery on the internet. Exercise, homework, and some times even exam are online lectures at home and uh, uh, homework in class. These course, uh, courses are open to uh, one and all and have no physical limitation because they are completely digitized and accessible over the internet with no barriers. Students are over the world registration uh, is free and uh, there are no prerequisites. Type of courses, maybe uh, lecture, seminar, uh, colloquium, uh, or reading, uh, tutorial, the directed individual laboratory. Uh, there is also a special case or a special uh, item of MOOC, what we call it a SPOOC. SPOOC, uh, uh, we talk about uh, a small private online uh, course. Uh, the, the difference here is the, uh, what we call it, the number of students themselves. Uh, in MOOC, we talk about uh, around uh, 100,000 and more. Here, we can um, create spoke for our uh, student, uh, especially for our university, for our college, uh, etc. cetera. Uh, regard brief history of MOOC, actually, uh, there is a lot of terminology and uh, a lot of uh, what we call it um, uh, 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 evolution of teaching happen during 2000 and 2007, such as the Open University uh, in UK is a public uh, distance learning research university and one of the biggest university start. Uh, to use such uh, method uh, for teaching written and the audio materials, the internet, disk-based software, and the television programs. So this is, was the start. After that, uh, 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 open source software pop up uh, uh, what we call it is a computer software with its source code made available uh, uh, end of uh, 1990s. Uh, foundation of the open source initiatives. After that, open educational resources are freely accessible, openly licensed document and the media that are useful for um, uh, teaching, learning, and uh, assessing as well as for research. Uh, later on, freely available for modification, use, and uh, uh, redistribution under a license similar to those used by uh, the open source free software community open con content license and then open courseware are uh, course license created at university and uh, published for free via the uh, internet the open courseware movement started in uh, uh, also 1999 actually the, the, the start of what we call it MOOC, uh, the first one was in Canada uh, uh, at uh, 2008, after that creation of two MOOCs platform, Coursera edX at uh, 2011, and uh, 
uh, the year of mock was 2012. Actually, there are two models. Um, the, they are very common, what we call it X-learning and uh, C-learning. X-learning stands for Extended Massive Open uh, Online uh, uh, Course relies on a more traditional model of education based on uh, lectures recorded in videos and uh, usually is well uh, financed and advantage of XMOC is that they significantly broaden the number of students who can be exposed to university level course. Critics of um, XMOC, however, uh, argue that XMOC are uh, in, inferior to the university courses. They mimic because they eliminate each student interaction and involve limited student-student interactions. Platform like edX Coursera uh, provide X uh, uh, MOOCs. Uh, regarding the uh, what we call it the second model, what we call it um, C MOOC. It is a connectivist MOOC. Uh, emphasize the uh, con, uh, connectivist uh, philosophy. It is a social platform uh, for collaboratively sharing and the building knowledge with, within a community of people rather than being delivered by an individual instructor as in traditional university courses. CMOC involves uh, groups of uh, people um, uh, uh, learning together. CMOCs often include blog, learning communities, and social media platforms that contain content uh, and promote interaction. Um, uh, in this environment, the participants are all considered teacher and learners, which stands in contrast to the structure of um, XMOOCs, where each individual is either uh, uh, a student or a teacher. Uh, the pros of uh, MOOCs actually are uh, uh, it's free, and um, what we call it uh, uh, high quality. It's a good opportunity, no formal requirement, and also the uh, cooperation is very uh, high. Uh, regarding the cons, no accreditation, overcrowding, high iteration lack of motivation, unreliable grading structure. Um, few existing MOOC, uh, such as it's a very famous Coursera and the edX and the uh, Obin, UP. Uh, the final, the final uh, item in the structural or a structural design for uh, MOOC. Important element uh, we have to follow when we need to uh, design or create a MOOC. Novelty and the leverage uh, for previous experience content that uh, uh, challenges and interest any participant with any level of expertise in a topic, no matter what, what their previous experience about the topic are. Uh, the second uh, element, input from diversity of source, rich amount of sources that come from diverse perspectives to help participants think and uh, um, develop understanding of the topic, uh, videos, readings, uh, uh, epoch, uh, movie clips, and a variety of digital material that can uh, enrich the experience of being informed and learning. The third, go for understanding and uh, uh, further think self-graded activity that allow participants to check their understanding of the weekly topic or discussion and uh, at the same time make participants think deeply about the issues presented in the week. Uh, motivation of engagement and community learning opportunities encourage participants to select a topic within the topic of the class, have their own discussion and learning hubs. 
invite them to use class material to trigger conversation and the learning. The last item, planning for legacy, inspire participants to create information, to create uh, digital spaces that will continue the discussion or uh, the information seeking for the topic of the class. I guess the student to take uh, what they learn and uh, agent of a change or discovery in their world of work or life. Thank you so much. Okay, uh, sir. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, you just finished <laughs> yeah. your presentation. Thank right. you so much. On time. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you so much, Mr. Ismail. That was a very fantastic presentation. And now we are going to the next session that is question and answer. And actually, you have one question from participants. And um, I will read the question. Yeah, please. The question is from Lenny Miftahul Hasana. Um, actually, this is from Indonesia. And the question is, what do you think of students who understand better when it is face to face? And how is your solution? Can you get the, the, the question? Okay, the question, as I heard from you, yeah. she asked about what if, do the you student, see? if the student like the face-to-face, -face, right? Yes, That's to great. understand better when it's face-to-face, because okay. maybe using technology is get something barrier like that? Actually, actually, um, there is no doubt face-to-face -face, uh, education is very better and uh, what we call it uh, suitable with uh, a lot of uh, students. But unfortunately, as we mm -hmm. uh, see, if we face such pandemic or such uh, crisis, we have to find mm -hmm. alternative. This alternative now, almost of these countries try to find alternative based on technology. Such uh, uh, of this technology, what we call it artificial intelligence. This artificial intelligence as a technology, it's a, it's a fabulous technology. Now it can help or assist the teacher, but soon, maybe within five years, maybe within 10 years, I don't know exactly time, that will replace the teacher itself. So now, there's a good chance to uh, what we call it to um, customize, to uh, tailor our courses based our experience and based our student uh, 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 um, mood or or, uh, or structure uh, thinking by creation and distribution. Uh, so such this. MOOC and other uh, approaches will help us to survive as possible as we can because the technology, I'm sure, I believe in that, will replace uh, educator sooner. Thank you. Thank you very much for your answer. I think it's quite clear. Um, let me check, maybe we have another question from participants. I just want to make sure. Rosemary. Uh, okay, Rosemary, if you have a question, just write it on the chat box. We say wait, Professor, for a moment. Maybe there are some participants who will ask a question. I uh, see there is a question from Ria Wastiani. Okay, the question from Ria Wastiani uh, for, for Professor Sharif. 
Um, yeah, please, please go ahead. I would like to ask you about the cons of the cons of using mock itself. With the irregular curriculum, how do we know that student is already reached their lesson? Thank you. Uh, I'm so sorry. I, I want to. Okay, I repeat. Yeah, yeah, yeah one please, more. because I, okay. I didn't get it. Okay, so he she asked about um, the contra, the contradict of using mock itself, maybe the negative impact or negative sides of using mock with with the irregular curriculum. How do we know the student is already reached their lesson? I think maybe how do you how do we know that the student is understand that lesson using mock? The, well, g great question. Actually, let us agree for something. Uh, there is no thing, uh, what we call it, has only a positive uh, side without negative side. Everything mm -hmm. we will use, any approach we will use in general has a positive and a negative side. But what happened now, this mm -hmm. technology, for example, artificial intelligence will help us a lot even will help us with uh, disabled students, okay? So they can de determine the, this, the, the type of disability, okay? And how uh, you can deal with it. Now, uh, if we uh, uh, see this guy, uh, Elon Musk, in his uh, uh, last experiment, how he will uh, check the knowledge in the, uh, the brain and how he transfer it it's, it's a very fabulous uh, 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 progress will happen. So that will help us a lot, uh, especially in education sector, to improve all these issues or uh, try to overcome all this negative, uh, negative side. OK, that's it. OK, thank you for the answer, thank Professor so Sharif. And we still have we still have another question for you, actually. Um, right. <clears throat> okay, this question is from. Okay, this question is from Laras Arinta Fauzia. She is from Yayan Samarinda, Indonesia. Mm -hmm. The question is, uh, oh, sorry, this is the question is for Dr. Pedro and Dr. Pedro is late right, right now. And wait, I'm going to check it. Okay, this one. Okay, the question is from uh, FND Napi Tupulu. Okay. Uh, can yep. can you can you explain how to develop your mock model, please? <laughs> Good. Actually, actually, we answer that uh, uh, via our presentation. <coughs> we put the steps and the elements as a uh, guidelines. You can do it, but um, this is my private recommendation. Uh, just put your personal experience because there is no you you can find and search you can find a lot of guidelines and 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 but believe me if you create your mock based on your uh, personalized experience that means you bought your touch that make your mock as a distinguished one and sure this one will a uh, match with a lot of people, they like it. Because as I said to you, we are a human, there is no standard, there is no standard mock that will suitable everyone. But when you bought your uh, personal touch, that make your mock distinguished. But try to follow the uh, general guidelines uh, for design, but I mean, what I need to say, uh, finally, the content, how you will show it, how you will uh, 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 both in, in sequence, 
all this based on your experience because that will uh, uh, carry your uh, personal touch. That's it. Thank you. Okay, thank you, um, Dr. Sherif. Thank you. Uh, I think there's one more last one, one more question. It is the last one. Yeah, yeah, please. Okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, from Tanti Sri. Uh, from from Tanti Sri, the question is: Is smoke is smoke common in Egypt? What is the benefit of smoke if if it is not accredited? Accredited, yes. Is more common in Egypt? Maybe the using of, of mock in Egypt, is it common? Great, great. Uh, this uh, question, one of, of, of the cons of uh, mock, uh, not a credit, right? So uh, the question is how we can benefit from it if it is not um, accredited, right? Is that right? Yes. Great. If it's not accredited. Great, great. Actually, um, uh, what we call it, President, uh, uh, President Trump, uh, within uh, one month ago, he uh, announced that uh, the hiring uh, during uh, American, uh, what we call it, an institute, will be based on the knowledge, barely with a certificate. This is the start uh, of uh, recognize qualification more than creditation. And Google and Microsoft start to recognize the qualification more than the certification. So accreditation after a while will not be the core or the main factor the knowledge and the skills will be the main factor and the will will be the key so it will not be uh, anymore as a cons and also now some countries like egypt try to solve this problem they make a partnership with univer university for example coursera make a lot of partnership with a lot of uh, governmental uh, university in Egypt, so the university will accredit the certificate and the Coursera will present the material. So both of the, the solution will overcome this problem. That's it. Thank you. Thank you so much for your great answer. And um, I think this is the end of uh, our last speaker. Actually, we have another two speakers, but we are really sorry that we just received the information that they cannot attend to our uh, event today because something important, maybe. So we're really we are really sorry for that. Okay, so uh, I think this is the end of, um, of our session. And uh, thank you very much for joining with us, for being with us. And thank, thank you, you, our speakers, our great speaker and audience participant. See you again in other events. Stay safe and stay positive. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Okay, for all participants, we just we just remind you for tomorrow's event session. So don't forget to join. From start from. One thirty. One thirty. Middle Indonesia time. Indonesia uh, Western time. Western. Middle Middle Indonesia. <laughs> Sorry.
Kota ini cukup besar dan padat. Memiliki sungai terpanjang dan menggunakan simbol satwa endemik Besut. Ialah Kota Samarinda. Merupakan pusat pemerintahan Ibu Kota Kalimantan Timur. Dari masa ke masa, kota ini terus menunjukkan peningkatan. Tak hanya di sektor perekonomian, namun juga di sektor pendidikan. Institut Agama Islam Negeri Samarinda merupakan pendidikan tinggi pertama yang mengedepankan pengetahuan agama Islam. Bahkan buah tangan dari beberapa tokoh yang tergabung dalam organisasi Islam. Demi meningkatkan mutu pendidikan, IAIN Samarinda terus melakukan serangkaian kerjasama di bidang pendidikan, baik bertaraf nasional maupun internasional. Melalui program kerjasama yang dijalin dengan berbagai lembaga terkait. Sejak berdiri sampai sekarang Institut Agama Islam Negeri IAIN Samarinda telah mengalami sembilan kali periode kepemimpinan. Tokoh-tokoh inilah yang membawa IAIN Samarinda tumbuh dan berkembang dan terus mengalami kemajuan dan peningkatan dari waktu ke waktu. Infrastruktur pendidikan didukung beberapa gedung bertingkat, dilengkapi dengan fasilitas penunjang, berupa gedung perpustakaan, laboratorium, dan masjid untuk praktik ilmu agama Islam dengan menerapkan konsep lingkungan hijau. Tidak hanya pada tumbuh kembang fasilitas, namun juga pengembangan pada fakultas dan jurusan seperti Fakultas Tarbiyah dan Ilmu Keguruan Fakultas Syariah Fakultas Ekonomi dan Bisnis Islam Fakultas Ushuluddin Adab dan Dakwah Program Pasca Sarjana atau Magister Untuk menjamin kualitas pendidikan di tiap fakultas IAIN Samarinda memiliki lembaga penjamin mutu atau LPM yang menjadi pusat quality assurance dalam menciptakan budaya mutu tridharma perguruan tinggi demi mewujudkan visi IAIN Samarinda. Sebagai perguruan tinggi keagamaan Islam negeri di Kalimantan Timur, IAIN Samarinda selalu mengedepankan pendalaman ilmu agama Islam, namun tidak mengesampingkan ilmu pengetahuan, penguasaan bahasa Arab, dan bahasa Inggris dengan bimbingan dosen yang berpengalaman di taraf nasional maupun internasional agar mereka nantinya mampu meraih prestasi yang membanggakan. 
Untuk itu, IAIN Samarinda memandang perlu adanya sebuah lembaga yang mampu melaksanakan program unggulan. Maka dibentuklah Ma'had Al-Jami'ah atau Pesantren Kampus. Dengan diikuti seluruh mahasiswa baru IAIN Samarinda dalam kurun waktu satu tahun. Terlepas dari itu, puluhan unit kegiatan mahasiswa hadir untuk mengembangkan minat, bakat, serta potensi mahasiswa. This event will be our last big event because we will the next generation. Sebagai cikal bakal ibu kota negara yang baru, IAIN akan berevolusi menjadi Universitas Islam Negeri dengan meningkatkan fasilitas yang dimiliki, tenaga pengajar hingga terus mencetak prestasi. IAIN Samarinda bersama pemerintah Provinsi Kalimantan Timur terus bekerja sama dalam peningkatan mutu pendidikan melalui berbagai cara. Salah satunya pemberian beasiswa serta tidak kalah pentingnya lulusan perguruan tinggi mampu mengisi formasi-formasi pekerjaan baik di pemerintahan ataupun swasta. Kebijakan politik suatu negara mempengaruhi kondisi dan situasi pendidikan yang ada di sekitar. Dengan perubahan kebijakan Republik Indonesia ibu kotanya akan berpindah ke Kalimantan atau Borneo. Menuntut kita semua, termasuk ia yang sama dengan kita yang terbaik sesuai dengan tuntutan peradaban bangsa. Selamat bergabung dengan Yayan Samarinda. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Kota ini cukup besar dan padat, memiliki sungai terpanjang dan menggunakan simbol satwa endemik besut. Ialah kota Samarinda, merupakan pusat pemerintahan ibu kota Kalimantan Timur. Dari masa ke masa, kota ini terus menunjukkan peningkatan tak hanya di sektor perekonomian, namun juga di sektor pendidikan. Institut Agama Islam Negeri Samarinda merupakan pendidikan tinggi pertama yang mengedepankan pengetahuan agama Islam. Merupakan buah tangan dari beberapa tokoh yang tergabung dalam organisasi Islam. Demi meningkatkan mutu pendidikan, IAIN Samarinda terus melakukan serangkaian kerjasama di bidang pendidikan baik bertaraf nasional 
maupun internasional melalui program kerjasama yang dijalin dengan berbagai lembaga terkait. Sejak berdiri sampai sekarang Institut Agama Islam Negeri IAIN Samarinda telah mengalami sembilan kali periode kepemimpinan. Tokoh-tokoh inilah yang membawa IAIN Samarinda tumbuh dan berkembang dan terus mengalami kemajuan dan peningkatan dari waktu ke waktu. Infrastruktur pendidikan didukung beberapa gedung bertingkat, dilengkapi dengan fasilitas penunjang, berupa gedung perpustakaan, laboratorium, dan masjid untuk praktik ilmu agama Islam dengan menerapkan konsep lingkungan hijau. Tidak hanya pada tumbuh kembang fasilitas, namun juga pengembangan pada fakultas dan jurusan seperti Fakultas Tarbiyah dan Ilmu Keguruan Fakultas Syariah Fakultas Ekonomi dan Bisnis Islam Fakultas Uskuluddin Adab dan Dakwah Program Pasca Sarjana atau Magister Untuk menjamin kualitas pendidikan di tiap fakultas IAIN Samarinda memiliki lembaga penjamin mutu atau LPM yang menjadi pusat quality assurance dalam menciptakan budaya mutu tridharma perguruan tinggi demi mewujudkan visi IAIN Samarinda. Sebagai perguruan tinggi keagamaan Islam negeri di Kalimantan Timur, IAIN Samarinda selalu mengedepankan pendalaman ilmu agama Islam namun tidak mengesampingkan ilmu pengetahuan, penguasaan bahasa Arab dan bahasa Inggris dengan bimbingan dosen yang berpengalaman di taraf nasional maupun internasional agar mereka nantinya mampu meraih prestasi yang membanggakan. Untuk itu, IAIN Samarinda memandang perlu adanya sebuah lembaga yang mampu melaksanakan program unggulan. Maka dibentuklah Ma'had Al-Jami'ah atau Pesantren Kampus. Dengan diikuti seluruh mahasiswa baru IAIN Samarinda dalam kurun waktu satu tahun. Terlepas dari itu, puluhan unit kegiatan mahasiswa hadir untuk mengembangkan minat, bakat, serta potensi mahasiswa. This event will be our last big event because we will the next generation. Sebagai cikal bakal ibu kota negara yang baru, IAIN akan berevolusi menjadi Universitas Islam Negeri dengan meningkatkan fasilitas yang dimiliki, 
tenaga pengajar, hingga terus mencetak prestasi. IAIN Samarinda bersama pemerintah Provinsi Kalimantan Timur terus bekerja sama dalam peningkatan mutu pendidikan melalui berbagai cara, salah satunya pemberian beasiswa, serta tidak kalah pentingnya, lulusan perguruan tinggi mampu mengisi formasi-formasi pekerjaan, baik di pemerintahan ataupun swasta. Kebijakan politik suatu negara mempengaruhi kondisi dan situasi pendidikan yang ada di sekitarnya. Dengan berubahnya kebijakan Republik Indonesia ibu kotanya akan berpindah ke Kalimantan atau Borneo. Menuntut kita semua, termasuk ia yang sama dengan untuk berbuat yang terbaik sesuai dengan tuntutan peradaban bangsa. Selamat bergabung dengan Yayan Samarinda. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Kota ini cukup besar dan padat, memiliki sungai terpanjang dan menggunakan simbol satwa endemik pesut 